Okay, audio check. Uh, guys, if you can hear me, type 1 if it sounds good. Type 2 if it's a good, like, level ratio. Type 2 if it sounds good. Hi, Kobopo, welcome in. Bro, what the fuck? Sorry, the default filter on TikTok was just, like, these AI elves dancing, and I didn't like it. It's alright. What the I hate when you motherfuckers say, it's alright, it's I, what the fuck? Hello, good morning, good afternoon. It is currently 11.12 for me. Right now I'm posting on IG and TikTok that I'm live. So hope everyone's doing well today. We had a lot of chatters in the Just Starting to screen. We had Cobobble, Hacker, Crystal, Luigi, and Mac. <laughs> Mac was here early though. Yeah, I, I played the demo for um, Yoshi's the, the Wooly one. It is puzzles and I don't like it. I freaking hate puzzles. The tree jump scared you? It's not that scary. It's just right here. I was gonna put it like here behind, but the dish rack is here. And the, so we're live in the million dollar Meg Esports kitchen. It was revealed last week, but we're here today. We're making cake pops because I was feeling extra and I was like, let's make some shit for my sister's workplace. That way, all her co workers love her. So she works in a factory. Uh, she works there all day. Fucking sad. Um, anyway, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. So, I think they're off for holiday on Monday. So the last day of work they have is Friday. Um, so we're gonna be making over a hundred cake pops. <laughs> so apparently, 
one box of cake mix makes like 40 to 50 depending on how big you make the cake pops so i bought a I didn't know that, so I bought like six boxes, but we'll see. Maybe we'll make some like big ass cake pops. We're like, I don't know. Um, if we can't, will you squish them? Maybe I'll just eat them. I don't know. Why are you motherfuckers saying the time? You guys are so dumb. Okay, anyway. I need to trash talk less. Um, if we gift, will you mail them to us? I consider doing that because I think the idea of like mailing treats would be fun. But the issue is, cake pops will melt, because it's chocolate, right? It's gonna melt in the mail, and it's not gonna turn out well, so you'd have to mail, like, it refrigerated. So, maybe we could do that in the future, but I'd have to figure it out. Anyway, um, so, what we're shooting for today is hashtag not sponsored. We are aiming for the illustrious... <laughs> you can't see the letters of ass. We're aiming for the cake pops you get at Starbucks. These are my personal favorite. These are my sister's favorite. So, I'm wearing my inside shoes because I'm going to be standing more today. So that's why you hear me stepping. So, we are using... The lighting is so bad. We're using confetti cake mix today. Because I think confetti is fun. Hi, Georgia. Welcome in. Shoes in the house. These are my inside shoes. Because I use these for exercise, but I haven't exercised them. Oh, I did. No, wait. I technically did. I did steps for 10 minutes. On days where I don't have to go out and do errands, like if I have to walk, then I consider that walking. But if I don't go out, then I do steps. So I did 10 minutes of steps the other day. And I was exhausted. Okay, enough selling. Enough selling. Um, I need to get to work. I need to get to work. Um, so basically, cake pops are easy. I haven't made them in a long ass time, but basically you make the cake, you mix it with frosting, or you have to bake the cake, let it cool, and then mix in frosting, and then you dip it in chocolate, decorate, easy clap, done. So first, so the instructions that I saw online, it said it should take two hours. So... I think the stream is going to last four. Because, you know, we're entertaining. We're stalling. Okay. Instructions. This is great value. Walmart. These were literally a buck a box. I think everything I bought today. Because I have cake mix, icing, peppermints for decoration, white chocolate, and then liquid food dye. We're going to go into that later. Why liquid food dye is most important for this. Um, so, I spent... And by I, I mean my sister. <laughs> Because I was like, if I'm going to make this shit, you can buy it. And she's like, okay, fair. Um, everything costs maybe like 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Because like the white chocolate, this is great value. It's obviously discount. 11 ounces. This motherfucker is 4 bucks. And I don't think it's going to be enough. I might have to go buy more tonight. Depending on how much we use today. No sprinkles? I don't know if I'll need sprinkles on these. I like the... We'll, we'll talk about decorating one that... Cause it takes like an hour in the oven because I'm going to be making two trays at once. That way we can min-max our time. Also, I would like to say before we get started, since I am baking for a lot of people, I am making food that is going to be sent to my sister's workplace where they have literally hundreds of employees and will be wearing a mask and wearing gloves when I'm handling food directly the whole time. So we're being extra safe. You know, that's how we do it in the Meg Esports kitchen. Um, your kitchen's gonna smell so good, I know. Um, so when, let's go over proper food safety. You wanna keep all food and drinks away from your workstation, right? That's why I have my cup on the counter here. You're gonna wanna wash hands before you touch any food directly before you change stations. Um, you can't necessarily just swap out your gloves all the time, because that's not proper food safety. Um, so basically, I would need to wash my hands and glove up anytime I go from prep table to oven, oven to prep, oven to dishes, that type of thing. Um, I can still wear the mask the whole time, so that's gonna stay on the whole stream. Um, but yeah, so that's why if anybody's coming in and chatters, if you see anybody ask about it, 
just type exclamation mask in chat, okay? That way they're aware. Because I know some people get all nitpicky whenever they see people wear masks, but we're doing it to be safe today. Um, because like, imagine, imagine, my sister brings in the cake pops to work, and I'm sick, and then we get everybody at the factory sick, that's really bad. Because mask wearing has been proven to mitigate the spread of any disease, considering if it travels the droplets, and just washing your hands and having a barrier is better for food safety. I've never heard of somebody having a mask while making food. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands and then, oh wait, shit. I have to put the mask on and then, because I can't take off my headsets in between. Because um, I used to work at, in food service during pandemic, right? And I worked at Subway, I mean Subway. And you know how when you talk, there's gonna be like droplets of spit coming out? So just p picture this, like somebody's making your food, right? And then they spit. And then it's icky. <laughs> The red people getting fumed. <laughs> I mean, I know, isn't the CDC recommended that everybody masks up again? I mean, I still wear masks when I go in public. I think it's proper etiquette, you know. Wait, I need my glasses. Cook AF? Did I say something wrong? I'm not dyslexic, but I, I can't speak. <laughs> I mean, just in general, you should still wear a mask in public, you know. I got my flu vaccine, I wear a mask, I haven't gotten sick in months. But I also leave my house. I never leave my house. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. If you feel sick at all, wear a mask. Easy clap. Um, also, gentle reminder. Um, since I'm gonna be, like, working and cooking today, I'm not gonna be, like, as talkative. So, chatters, as you know, feel free to chat with each other, to ask me questions, email spam, all that fun jazz. And if you have time... We are doing the Naughty or Nice stream on Friday, so make sure you fill out that survey. <laughs> We're gonna work because people are nasty. Okay. I think I have to check. I didn't eat. Oh, fuck. I had a notification, and I went to swipe it away, and then another notification came up. Uh-oh. What if that was important? Uh-oh. Okay, it wasn't an email. Easy. I also have my computer here behind the tree. That's why the tree's there. Oh, damn it. I wanted to eat the cake pop, but I guess I'll save that for later. Okay. So, first. Bring it down to 350. Easy. Oh, defaults to 350. Nice. It took me a long time to figure out how to use this oven. Because I'm used to having, like, a dial set up, but this one is fully buttoned. Yeah, exactly. If you have your vaccine and your boosters, you don't necessarily need to wear a mask. That's true. But if you can, but you can still choose to wear a mask if you so desire. Okay, so if anybody's worked in food, you know how at your hand wash station you have like single use paper towels? So that's what I have prepped. I have like paper towels here and then once pre torn to like dry. I don't know. I think it's weird. How, like, if you grab a paper towel and you have to touch the roll to tear it, I just think that's gross. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not a hypochondriac, but I think I'm getting there. Okay, let's wash our hands. Okay, so if you don't know how to wash your hands, toss it on, douse your hands, and then you scrub. And then when you scrub, let me demonstrate really quick. Like this, right? And then you run your fingers between each other. And then you kind of dig your nails in. Make sure you wash all your motherfucking fingers, okay? Then we're gonna use towel to turn off the faucet. Do not use the same towel to dry your pan, because that touched the dirty faucet. If you don't know how to wash your hands, that's a problem. Okay. Um, keep in mind, since I am cooking or baking for a lot of people today, that's why I'm being, like, extra cautious with the hand washing. You don't necessarily need to be, like, this aggro if you're cooking at home. Because if you're cooking at home, you're only really cooking for 
like your family and maybe some friends. But we're cooking for possibly hundreds of people today. So I have to make sure I'm extra clean. Does anyone like mock pizza? Oh, mock pizza is my favorite pizza place. Mainly because our local ones, they only charge like a flat rate for unlimited toppings. Uh, my pizza is disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I love it, but not everybody, not, not everybody else will like it. If you don't wash your hands well, don't go near me. I know, right? You never had mock pizza? Okay. I don't have actual mixing bowls. Um. Actually, I just realized I don't necessarily need gloves for this part because I'm not handling food directly, but you know what? It's fine. Okay. So for this recipe, we need one bag of cake mix, one and a quarter cup water, half a cup vegetable oil, and four egg whites. Okay. So, a few tips. I looked this up today, so I'm not a baker, but this is just what I read online. So, if you use milk instead of water, it makes your cake more dense, but also more dry, but it makes it taste more rich. And, um, yeah, I don't have vegetable oil, I only have olive oil, so it works fine. Uh, it would, no, it's fine, we're gonna add icing, so it's fine. And I also have a fuck ton of milk in the fridge, so I have to use the milk. Okay. What was I doing? Like I said, I, I'm not touching food directly, so I don't necessarily need gloves. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna separate the whites first. Okay. separate eggs in a long time. Uh, I know this is from a Yoshi game. I know that. Okay. So, when you're prepping eggs, just in general, you don't want to crack all your eggs into one bowl, because, for example, if one of your eggs is spoiled, or if it has, like, you know, you ever get an egg, this hasn't happened to me, but where it has like a bird in it, or like the fertilized <laughs> egg. Uh, so it, basically, if you crack all your eggs into one bowl, then it contaminates all of them. So if you're cracking them, crack them into separate bowls. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's just what I've read. I've never had it happen. But, yeah. Okay, best strat for cracking an egg. Let it drop. Okay, I would have needed gloves for this because I'm touching the egg. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think the best strategy for separating a yolk from the white... Ooh, that was pretty good. Dude, that's like perfect! Holy! You guys can't see, but that was like literally perfect. Okay, I gotta hurry up the oven's almost ready. You never heard of that? I mean, I read it in an article one time, and then I was kind of, like, traumatized thinking about it. I think I saw it in, like, a Bon Appetit video, like, three years ago. I mean, you can always put your eggs into the same bowl once you've seen that it's not a bad egg. Like, that's totally fine. But you always, like, see how I cracked it over a new bowl and then I can combine them now? Need four egg whites. Dude, this is actually easier. Because I told you guys, I had a friend over a few weekends ago. And they were making eggnog. And they were having so much trouble separating... Oh, I cracked that one. I cracked it. That was a fail. Uh, two for three is still pretty good. Since I'm going to be making two boxes, oh shit, I cracked this one bad. Since I'm making two boxes, I'll go ahead and crack the other four as well. <laughs> okay, two for four, that's not good. Okay. 
We now have... My hands are icky. I now have... I can't cook. I have my yolks. And then my whites. We're not going to throw away the yolks because that's wasteful. I'll have these for breakfast tomorrow or some shit. What the fuck are you guys talking about? <laughs> Are oh, you talking about games? Okay, cool. Thank you for entertaining yourselves, Jen. Okay, so I'm prepping the other four eggs. The thing I don't like about egg whites is that it looks like phlegm. And it looks icky. Oh, you know what I also love? The trash can that they had here when we moved in. It's one of the ones that has a foot paddle, so you don't have to touch the actual can. I, I did it wrong. I did an oopsie. I didn't crack it over a separate bowl. Because, like, imagine you're working in a bakery, and you- My oven's ready. And you have to, like, crack a hundred eggs. And, like, the hundredth egg is the rotten one, then you have to toss away all a hundred. That'd be sad. And then your manager would get so mad at you. But then they won't fire you because they hate you and they want you to like keep having that bad job. Okay, that's three. One more, one more. I am dripping eggs all over the floor. I probably mopped the other day. I've never seen a bad egg, me neither. But I swear some of you chatters are bad eggs, but we'll see on Friday. <laughs> um, type one if you're a bad egg. Okay. Oh, I have to show you guys how to take off gloves properly later. Because there's a very specific way to take off gloves to where you don't touch the outside. I'm unique. Okay, so now I have eight egg whites because we're making two batches. Okay, now I need milk and oil. So I need half and then a quarter cup. I just realized I can use the same measuring cup. Yeah, I, there's a lot of um, Hispanic people in the city I live in, and it's interesting because they offer like a tres leches cake at like Walmarts and Safeways, and they never used to have that in my hometown. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. Okay, half a cup of vegetable oil. I was fucked up. Okay, so I have half a cup of vegetable oil. Then I need one and a, a quarter milk. I didn't pre-open the milk. Cause remember how I told you guys my one of my roommates' moms bought like two full ass gallons of milk. And I used one gallon, but I haven't cracked this one open yet. hard with gloves on. And granted, these are nicer gloves. Oh wait, I almost got it. Ayo. Easy. Okay, so I need one and a quarter. Okay. 
What's Coquito? I've never heard of that. Because, like, back in my hometown, there was, like, a lot of white people. Okay. Now, typically, with any form of cooking or baking, you're going to want to mix your liquids before the dries. That way, everything will combine nicely. Okay, so now I have the milk, oil, and egg whites. I'm, yes, I know I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm a fake. I'm a poser. I'm whitewashed. Neither of my parents were, like, super traditional when I was growing up, so... I'm very Americanized. Okay, now the best part. Now I'm probably gonna add about a third of our mix. If you add it all at once, it's gonna be lumpy. Or harder to combine. What kind of milk jug was that? Uh, I think it's from Costco. But yeah, the rectangle shaped ones are funny, huh? A complaint that I have about like funfetti cakes is that I wish they had more sprinkles. There's like barely any. There's like a pinch of rainbow in here. I need more. Is anybody going to be doing baking themselves for holiday? I know my mom usually does cookies, but I don't know if she's doing it this year. Also, I was going to set up the second camera today, but I was watching that clips of the Gingerbread House stream, and the USB camera looks so ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're just going to do full cam today. You gonna try and bake a lot next year? Oh yeah, didn't you? I know that Kobo, but you said that you're kind of crafty, I think, right? Okay, I've gotten most of the lumps out. Where's the handle? Right there. Just on the back face towards me. You're making sugar cookies? Ooh, very nice. I want to make cookies from scratch yet because like I'm still learning how to use this oven because like even if the oven says it's 350 doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna be consistently at 350 and especially with older ovens like the one I have at or had at my parents house it was not good <laughs> it was like older than me Hey, Chatters, can you type your favorite emote? Type your favorite emote. Hi, Titans. Chatters, what's your favorite emote? Oh, dude, I want to save up for a KitchenAid. I want one of those mixers. Okay, fully mixed. Just about got all of the tad bits out. Thank you, Chatters. KitchenAid is like the name brand for like mixers, but I know there's some lower price point alternative. Okay, so an early Christmas present to me for my sister were these baking pans. Um, hashtag not sponsored, but these are Ninja Never Stick. They are the best things that I've ever found. They don't stick at all. It's crazy. You don't even need to put, like, pan or butter down. It's insane. But these trays were, like, $20 each. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but they are very nice. It does make, like, um, the washing process so much easier. So I don't need to grease these pans. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be making, I'm going to bake two cakes at once so we can min-max our time. Oh, I forgot to put on my turner. Frick. Hold. Hi, Titans. Welcome in. Hey. 
Commonly known as a spatula, it's a turner. If you cook or bake and you don't get every little scrape, every morsel of your batter out of the bowl, you're psycho. Okay, you're wasting food. Think about all the kids who are starving in America. Let's talk about poverty, guys. I should turn it this way. <laughs> I'm psycho, but for the wrong reasons. Um, self abort. Oh, I was gonna bake my sister, like, cupcakes for her birthday. But we went to the grocery store the other day. And we were looking at the cakes. And she's like, I kind of want a custom cake. So, uh, I don't have to bake cupcakes this year. Let's go. Look at that. Perfecto. Okay. Let's get our another batch ready. <gasps> okay. So, repeat. Let's get our four egg whites. Imagine they burn in the oven, I'd cry. And then I need half a cup. I don't know how many um, she cakes I'm gonna have to make, because I told my sister I'd make at least 100 cake pops. So I think today, we'll see how many two sheets make, and then we'll just make whatever we need tomorrow. Because we're doing two two days, <laughs> I said two gays, two days of baking. You guys only did blue shells and bullets, how'd it go? Probably crazy, huh? Starving in America, but I'm in America. Um, poverty is considered. Oh, we have our eggs, oil, and milk. And poverty is considered like if you are living with a. There's a threat. Like there's an annual threshold income. I think poverty is like less than 40k a year, which is like if you make if your family or your household makes less than little under three, a little over three thousand a month. Because if you think about it, if you're because I think the. Um, because I think ideally your rent should be no more than a third of your income. So, um, if your rent is like more than half of your income, then you aren't making enough money. And then, because I think every family should probably have like at least a quarter of their income put towards like luxuries, like paying for your internet, your like subscription services, going out to eat. But not every household can afford that. So, that's why it's important to advocate for a decent national minimum wage, along with um, keeping student lunch programs, um, increasing benefits, so like food stamps, um, rental assistance. Because those are determined at the state level for most of those programs, I believe. This entire such in ki kitchen slays. Yeah, it's it's pretty nuts. We got lucky. Cause I'm really glad we got this place. It was kind of like looking like it wasn't gonna happen, but we got really lucky. And we signed for a year, so I'm here for a year, baby. All right, add some more. I always have the problem of preheating my oven too early. So, oopsie. Like, I feel like I'm wasting energy. I know I talked about before that I want to try and do weekly or bi-weekly cooking streams. Would you guys like it? I love the center island. This actually isn't an island. It's just the dining room table. I slid over to the kitchen. Because I was considering buying, like, a fold-up table. But... Since I'm able to move the dining room table with ease because it has like little rubber pads underneath the, the feet, I don't have to worry about scratching the floor. And it's nice because um, the tabletop is, I don't know what it's called, but it's faux marble and it's the material to where you can put like a hot pan on top of it and it won't like 
break the pan or hurt the tabletop. So, because this, this unit was like remodeled a few years ago. So I don't have to buy like a separate island or a separate table, so that's nice. So if I were to do weekly cooking, should I keep the three weekday slots and then do cooking on a weekend? The camera angle is deceiving, yeah. I was gonna zoom out more, but like I don't wanna show feet. <laughs> Now, in order to get the lumps, you're going to want to run your utensil along the sides, like this. That way it kind of crushes any balls of dry ingredients. I do like to do this with a turner, but I'm saving time. Oh, I put the tray over here. Lam out. I want to eat the batter. But I shouldn't. Are you leaving us, Titans? How could you? Sad day. It's a sad day whenever I don't see chatters in chat. Okay, I've gotten like every last bit out of the bowl. Oh shit. done. That bowl is ceramic, so it's really heavy. It hurt my wrist. Okay, let's get these in the oven. I'm taking the gloves off because they're plastic and I don't want them to burn in the oven. Okay, I'm turning on the fan because if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I've triggered the fire alarm multiple times. Oopsie! set a timer on my phone so it says it has to be in the oven for 9 by 13 for 34 to 38 I'm gonna check it at 20 just to be safe <laughs> the gloves are off baby <laughs> okay so let's clean up a little bit I'm batting the bot. <laughs> also, thank you guys for acting accordingly. Like I explained before, uh, if you ever see anybody sus or a bot, just spam so the message isn't on screen and I'll handle it later. Oh, also, a thing that I do whenever I open anything new is I date when I opened it. So 12 20. Like MRDs. Made ready. I didn't even see a bot because chat spammed. Oh, did they just get auto banned? No way. Oh, they had a spam link. I mean, you can tell. 
hell? Because, like, as with most anybody, you have, like, a feed of, like, what's going on in your channel. Like, if you get subs, follows, redemptions. So, I have two different boxes. I, I think I'll, sc I'll screenshot my stream setup. And then I'll show you guys in a second. Ain't no way! Thank you for that gifted sub, Mac. Thank you. Can I get some wax in chat? Thank you. Oh, I went to Ed. Enjoy that gift sub, man. Um, I'll screenshot my my screen so you guys can see what this looks like for me. Dude, my <laughs> my stream setup is crazy. It's crazy. If Titan's debating, then they're getting banned. Opening seeing if I have enough funds. Dude, that's me. Because I have 20 bucks, and I have 20 bucks because Titans gave me 20 bucks the other day. But my credit card recycles in a week, so I can buy shit next week. Okay, it's important as you cook to clean as you go. Just for common courtesy. I usually like to wait till the end, because I'm the type of person to where... I like doing all my dishes at once, so I don't mind. Like, if I have a mountain of dishes, I don't give a fuck. It's like, after you work in food, you see, like, how many dishes they have, so I'm just unfazed. Hi, Potato. Welcome in, hon. Okay. So, I'm gonna... Should I wash dishes? I don't have many. I should, because it's in the oven. That'd be the time to wash dishes. Okay, anyway. Let's put shit away. I'm also saying... Oh yeah, I'll show my, you I'll show you guys my stream setup in a second. I just realized I might not have enough eggs. HOLY! What?! Ten gifted? What the fuck? Y'all thought it was split? I don't know. We never know. Can we get some white? Dude, you're insane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, ten new chatters with emotes. We had Joby, Deegan, Alex Vision, Ethan, Babra. Oh, a lot of these are Tanuki Tunic oh, Brian. Who's that? A lot of chatters got them. Oh, Twitch payout. Trip. But thank you! Smashing our sub goal ain't no way! Thank you guys. Thank you, chat us. You guys are gonna get your name written at the end of stream. Thank you, Kobo, cool for gifted. Wait! Hold. Hold. My ass off. <laughs> We're farming. Thank you, chatters. Can we get some little bubbles in chat? <laughs> um. Due to our generous Oilers, we now have a hype train. Let's go. If you have hype train emotes, put them in the chat. What's your favorite hype emote? Uh, if you don't know, know, know what hype trains are, for five minutes. And five minutes only. If you subscribe, cheer, or sub with Prime, then you get an exclusive Twitch-only emote. Ain't no way. But thank you. Hey, mask off. Or mask on. I feel more comfortable wearing a mask, honestly. Not gonna lie. I was talking to my sister about it, and we both have the feeling to where, like, if we wear a mask, we don't feel like we have to, like, smile as much. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, let's clean up. But thank you, chat. I just. Dude, 10 gifted. You're insane. You better, like, buy yourself not not fuck. <laughs> you better buy yourself something nice for Christmas, too, you know. Can't be giving all your money away. <laughs> I am insane. Ooh, I can make eggnog with this. Because for eggnog, you need egg yolks. Gotta get every little bit of egg out. I'm gonna do D 
dishes. I'm gonna do dishes. Oh, <laughs> Wubco. <laughs> Hey, money wubby, ain't no way. Let's get a new goal. We're at 43. It's crazy. I always start streaming the, the, with the anticipation that I'll get nothing. So any stream that I do get a donation, I'm just like, no way. It, okay, it may seem like I'm unfazed in person, but in my head, I'm like freaking out, okay? I'm reorganizing the fridge because we're going to need to put the cake in the fridge to cool. Your pants about to be crazy? Probably. Hopefully. Because, like, with my Twitch pants, as of recent, they've been covering majority of, like, my subscriptions and bills. So, like, my phone bill, that type of jazz. Yeah, I know my sister's paychecks have been insane because she's been having like mandatory overtime. Wipe the table down and then I'm gonna start on dishes. While I'm doing dishes, I'll play a video for you guys. Yeah, I think there's no issue with, like, taking overtime or working extra hours as long as you know you can handle it. And as long as you're not, like, pushing yourself too much. I think it's totally fine. Okay, I'll clean. So... I wanted to play, like, cooking videos, and I know Bon Appetit had their scandal for, um, being racist a little bit with execs, but I wanted to watch one of their cookie ones. Okay, bye, Titans. We'll see you later, hon. Once again, thank you for the 10 gifted earlier. You're crazy. <laughs> okay. So, I have this here. I'm gonna wash dishes, so enjoy the video. Today we're in the test kitchen making our favorite cookies. A great cookie. Ain't no way! And captions so you wrong. you can have one or you can have ten, and it's all good. You could take it like the chocolatey way, you can take it the tangy way. Well, that's way. a level three head treat, no way. Crumbly, tender, Thank you, chatters. chewy. The whole spectrum of emotions can be expressed. During the basically guide to better baking, this was an amazing package that Sarah Jan Pell created. Well, I can um, eat the cake pop now. The very first recipe in that series was. I'm gonna wash dishes. Behave. Chocolate salted buckwheat chocolate. Love chip. To oil. I'm gonna chat on my it phone, so I'm gonna see you guys soon. I would make almost. Weekly. Don't be sus. It's been ten minutes in the like oven. Crispy caramely base with whatever I Looks had in good. my pantry, if it was nuts or seeds or dried fruit or whatever. So first thing we're gonna do is mix our dry ingredients together, which is just. AP flour and buckwheat flour, again, really nutty and dark and gives these co these cookies like sort of a deeper, richer color. Um, some baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Oh. You want to make sure that Since your brown Since we have a little bit of downtime, if you, you haven't already, it, so not, like, scrambling your eggs. make sure you but fill out that survey really that's awesome in the pin message. Burnished bits have you been naughty or nice? During the browning period. And this is sort of like a flavor bomb of like beautiful oh, toasty vanilla-y notes. <laughs> so we have a little bit of, br of brown sugar oh, and a little bit of what? white sugar. One full egg. We're going to do this in slow addition. So one at a time. Oh my God. Adding one egg and then we're going to add Hi, two lemon, yolks lemon, and huh? a little bit of vanilla extract. Adding extra richness and fat without the added protein of the white. We're going to fold in our dry sesame seeds, a mix of black and white, and some flax seeds. I like them because they provide a little bit of texture and mostly like a really fun confetti-like look. What I'm gonna do is roll each individual ball in Rice Krispies cereal. The reason that this happened is because early COVID, again, I was 
wanting sweets desperately, but wanting very oh, easy and thank simple Thank you for another gift, Mac. I appreciate it. Thank you for gifting the lemon. So I was making a lot of Good cookies. Thank you. A lot of Rice Krispie treats. And then we're just gonna finish them with a little bit of flaky salt. What we're gonna do is bake them, and then right when they come out of the oven, we're gonna bang the sheet pan on the counter. And you can see that they kind of de-puff and have this nice little crinkle. So we are basically like, it was rising, and then we arrested the rise, make them nice and flat, and now we're just gonna crisp them all the way through. So our cookies are done. They look wonderful. They're nice and toasty. You can see the parts where the cereal gets like, a little golden brown and toasty, which is awesome. It's nice and salty, nice and crispy, and a mixture of textures, which I love. Mm -hmm. So the cereal stays really crispy and light and puffy, like what you love about Rice Krispies. And then the inside is just nutty and rich and delightful. I love it. To me, this is a perfect snack cookie. Like, this isn't necessarily dessert, but if you put them on either side of an ice cream sandwich, I would not be mad at that either. I first baked these cookies when my husband and I were running a micro bakery out of our apartment uh, during the pandemic. My yeah, very first like cookie is a cake or a regular chocolate chip cookie. It uses salty one cookie. of my uh, favorite ingredients, yeah, which is cookie, this raspberry chocolate. Cookies. And then I make a very simple oatmeal streusel to put on top. The first thing I'm going to do is make my streusel. I have flour, sugar. Next is light brown sugar and salt as well. A streusel is a crumbly topping. Uh, you've probably seen it on top of like a pie or coffee cake. Next I'm adding some cold cubed butter. I'm looking to just make the mixture crumbly and have the butter incorporated in chunks. I'm adding oats for texture, and as it toasts in the oven, it'll take on this slightly malty taste, which complements the cookie very well. Why would you want to eat a cookie with this your salt? This is the finished streusel that I mean, I'm going know, to press like, onto the top a of lot my of cookie. International... So here is my cookie like in dough. Europe, it's like more savory, a standard like, chocolate chip cookie like dough. I've like added lemon zest to the dough common. as well, they have just savory to you know, reflect the flavor and the tartness of the raspberry chocolate. Like, you know how Australia has that whole very crisp nature of it. My favorite part of this recipe is this chocolate. I love our sugar. I love it. Uh, it's from Valerona, Even which like, um, is really my favorite chocolate, chocolate to use. I've used like it in American every professional kitchen that I've ever worked in, similar sugar. to white chocolate. But where white so chocolate doesn't have chocolate. milk powder, this instead has freeze-dried raspberry powder, uh, which is what gives it that color and that really intense raspberry flavor. It's just unlike anything you've ever tasted before. And then I have toasted pecans, which I've chopped. The nuts have to be toasted, okay? That's important. Don't come at me with some raw nuts that are waxy and crumbly. You gotta <laughs> toast them first to really unlock their flavor. And next thing I'm going to do is just scoop it onto a sheet tray using an ice cream scoop. Then top with streusel and chill the dough for like two hours and even up to overnight. I'm going to pop these in the oven at 350 for eight to 12 minutes. Here are my baked cookies. They look great. Um, you can see that the edges are pale golden brown. Uh, the centers are slightly pale. You really don't want to overbake your cookie, all right? It needs to be a bit chewy in the center. You can always underbake your cookies just a touch because when you take them out of the oven, they're going to continue to cook. Here are my very crisp cookies. Uh, they're absolutely my favorite cookie to make any time of the year. These look bad. It's a tart of chocolate that hits you first. It's sweet, it's tart, it's crunchy, they chewy, look fine. just a little bit crispy. There is a it reason like that it's sold out every you. time we put it uh, on the menu. It was extremely unexpected flavor combination that it people are done. absolutely loved. When I'm craving a cookie, I want a little bit of everything. I want them to be a little crispy, definitely chewy, a little sweet, a little salty, kind of touch upon all of those classic temples. Today I'm making a salted toffee I'm cookie. Eat the base of this now. cookie uses BA's best cookie dough recipe, which we know is well tested, it's well liked, and really I'll move the I'll move the video. When you do have a good foundation, you can really use Okay, that pause, pause, to pause. Kind of go in I put the camera or I put the video here, that way you guys can't see my ass. Anyway. <laughs> I get so paranoid about that. Okay, anyway directions. I'm gonna start by making the salted toffee and it is 
One of the easiest things you'll ever make. It's just a little bit of sugar and then butter and salt. Don't walk away from the stove because it oh, will I hate burn. heating up Tossy sugar. Tossy is essentially hard candy. It's essential that you take this up to a certain temperature. I'm going to take it up to around between 290 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is really important that you take it up to the specific temperature because if you don't, then the candy will not harden and it will be kind of like malleable and that's not what we're looking for. Um, once this is ready, you have to work really fast to pour it in the sheet pan and spread it because if you don't, it's going to start solidifying in the pot itself. This has been cooled and look, it's so hard. See, it broke. So that's what we want. We want the toffee to break as soon as you hit it with something. This is so fun <laughs> if you need to get some aggression. <laughs> the way she made eye contact holding the rolling pin was so funny. Now for the real fun part. The goal is to break these <laughs> toffee pieces into bite-sized chunks so that they can fold nicely into each cookie. So this is a brown butter cookie dough and I have my wet ingredients already mixed and this is some butter and sugar that's been uh, creamed together. And now I'm gonna slowly add the flour and the dry ingredients. Gently just stir and we don't wanna overwork this cookie dough because Otherwise, the cookie won't be chewy. Like you I just realized, the video is called Six Pro Chefs Make Their Favorite Cookies. So yes, all these are technically cookies. Overwork the gluten. A dough like this is generally used for a chocolate chip cookie, you know, because um, there is enough like sugar and flour to really kind of help hold like the chocolate chips together. I'm adding coffee to this. You want just enough so that you get those little puddles of uh, toffee. I am going to let this dough rest for about 10, 15 minutes. The flour is going to absorb more of the moisture and that way when we like scoop out little like cookie balls, they're gonna hold their shape. These are going to go in the oven for about eight to those 10 minutes. Those cookies are huge. Oh my god, these look perfect. So you can see that the edges are crispy and golden. <laughs> Why and are you guys so hung up on the salt? Kind of melted into the I mean, keep in mind, these are adults are making cookies. Like they have the more mature the palette. We in the center. So delicious. Oh my god. Mm. <clears throat> so buttery. You really get those toasty notes from the brown butter. And the toffee is like spread evenly through the cookie. And you can really see that from the back of this cookie, like the toffee has kind of melted everywhere. So with each bite, you're going to get a little piece of toffee. Imagine just like sitting on your couch, watching your favorite show, and then you have a warm cookie like this. Like, I, I don't think it gets better than that, so. Damn. I need, to, there's a reason why I stopped watching cooking videos. Like, okay. I also banned the word food from like my TikTok for you page because I kept on getting like recipes and then I would see a video and then I would get hungry and then I'd snap. So I need to stop. But you know what I can't stop doing? I can't stop running ads because Chatter TV are an hour into stream, so it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. But you can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link Amazon Prime to Twitch and hashtag sub for you, Prime. I gotta check out the cakes. Anyway, get some water, get a snack. Get boomed. Mask on. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> my shirt's like a little bit too tight on my tummy. Mask on. Well, they've risen a lot. And, okay. So usually, I'm going to check on them in five five minutes. Five minutes. Or probably, I checked them in two. Let's check them in ten. Because it said thirty. Uh, what was I going to say? Okay, because you know how, like, in your oven, usually the top tray cooks faster than the bottom? They look exactly the same color. So that means, like, the, the airflow in the oven is pretty consistent. That's nice. Hi, welcome in. Hope we're doing well today, time. Shadows, give me get some peace I two yos. We got 10 more minutes for the oven. 
Well, I gotta find the video. Why do you need a mask on for the oven? Uh, this I, I don't know. This is a published recipe, and this was honestly <laughs> maybe I mean, five honestly, years ago. This recipe, like I mean, if I did spittle, impactful, then the germs, the oven, the, ger the oven would kill the germs. I don't know. So we're starting here. We're, we're baking for like a hundred people today, so decent amount of just being safe. Cocoa powder, and then Thank one you, Matt. that just is allowed to stay a little bit plainer with vanilla. So you're making an alternating stack of the doughs. Two layers of I vanilla, swear if the next two cookie layers is salt. of chocolate. <laughs> Unlike cookies that bend, have gooey centers, shortbread is something that Oh, has I don't like shortbread. I don't so like I hard cookie. I want to roll this dough together. Starting at one edge, I'm just pulling it into shape into a log. You can already see how compacting it into a log kind of almost swirled and waved those two doughs together. These people, this the chefs or the chatters? For months like this. Rest it two hours until it's firm and it's really nicely sliceable and you're good to go. So this is the chilled dough. What's fun about this is, you know, you don't have to go all in on one sanding sugar. In fact, you don't even need to use sanding sugar, but it's a way to like take this zebra stripe shortbread cookie and elevate it still further. Yeah, they're now, trendy. egg wash here is to help the <laughs> sanding sugar adhere. This is all kind of like extra credit. Oh, I thought it was sesame. It oh my God, I got scared. Beautiful and makes it just slightly over the top. You know, these are gonna go into the oven at 350. This is about the right amount to put on a baking sheet because they will spread a little bit, although not crazily. So these have been baking, you know, for- I like, like the sprinkles on the edge, here. that's cute. You're not gonna see a big color change. What you will feel is a slightly firming around the edge and a little bit of like golden color underneath. These are my zebra stripe shortbread cookie. Oh, that smells good. That cocoa just coming through. They're like super buttery. And uh the other ones look better. I don't like shortbread. I, I really love these cookies. Oh so dude, any cookie with cookie jam. Ina Gardens jam thumbprint cookie. It is one I've been making for years and years and years, well before I got into food. So we've made our shortbread dough. It's chilled. This is about how much you're looking to break off. This is one ounce exactly. Just a little golf ball size, right? We're just going to roll them in egg and try to keep um, All these cookies are egg, bad? One Says the bitch is gonna make sugar cookies. Basic ass sugar cookies for holiday. For the coconut, almost like you're making a breaded cutlet. This is the shorter dried coconut. Okay, I don't like coconut and cookies. Sweet. Actually, this is where- Unless it's like the Girl Scout ones. Don't tell her. She uses the longer, you know, standard soft sweetened coconut. And those are delicious, but I kind of just, I like this. I can smell the cakes now. And it smells really good. Coconut, and it looks super cute with its short hair, so. But now we're going I've to- I've never seen the um, short at the little coconut. What I normally do is kind of- Guys, pack. guys, this is Bon Appetit. They're like a food magazine for middle-aged women. Of course, they're going to try and be fancy. Guys, come on. Come on. You guys are haters. Pat all of them down so that instead of a ball shape, they're more of like a rounded disc cookie shape, if you will. Just make enough of, a, of an indentation for some jam to go in smooth out or massage any cracks that you um, create along the way. I mean, if you want to measure it out, it will be like a quarter, a half teaspoon each. You don't have to be that precise. I love the Bone Maman jam, the raspberry preserves. You do want the seeds, so go for preserves rather than like a, a jelly. And then apricot also is a classic, so we'll use that as well. We're just gonna bake them off in a 350 oven for about 20, 25 minutes. That cookie is crooked. It's crooked. You want the Hi, Emmy, welcome in. to be nice and golden. They'll tell you when they're ready. I love These cake pops are too. Out of the oven. They are if I could so eat them gorgeous. every day, I would. They're like but I shouldn't. Little jewels. Here we are. <laughs> they're, okay. On Ina's. Ever since we moved, there's like a Starbucks dangerously close to where we live, like a block away. And it, it's been so hard because I'm trying to do like daily walks too. It's so hard not to stop and get a cake pop. Because in my head, anytime I have to do errands, I'm like, oh, I'll get a treat. You know, I walked, I spent two hours shopping. I want to get a treat. But I'm like, I don't need no cake pops every day. 
Jam thumbprint cookies. They are a classic in our household for a reason. Mm. I think these would be great without Buttery, the coconut. Tender, perfect amount of sweetness from the jam. The coconut is really bringing both that nutty aroma, but also um, nice fun texture. This shorter, unsweetened coconut toasted up so well. It's just really rich, buttery, crumbly. It's a nice old fashioned cookie, but. Okay, welcome um, in Deacon, thank you for the lurk. <laughs> Today I'm making a biscotti, um, which is super nostalgic for me. I used to eat biscotti when I lived at home Is it with biscotti a bread? Every night with them. So my biscotti DUM. dough is usually made with like flour, eggs, sugar, butter, some extracts. This one has almonds in it too. I Deacon. Really simple. It's a, it's like a, it's shortbread adjacent, I would say. Oh, shortbread, okay. It's a decent amount of butter and it sets up to be pretty firm so we can shape it into Dude, why? Logs. What's with all these hard like ass cookies? across 12 you know, inches I want to save my teeth. That should be perfect. Um, and then we're gonna just bake it in the oven for 30 minutes at like 350. And when it comes out, we'll have like a loaf of biscotti dough that we're gonna slice into like one inch biscotti. So I'm looking it looks for like, like 10 to 12 bread. pieces per loaf. Then I'm just it gonna arrange like them on a parchment. Bread. <laughs> oh my God, no way. Thank you for that recent Deacon. I appreciate it. With Prime, ain't no way. Thank you, hon. You're gonna get your name written. And I think Deacon broke her sub goal, so thank you. Thank you. Y'all broke two sub goals today. Y'all are crazy. Dude, we're so close to 50 subs. We haven't peaked at 50 in ages. Anyway, two minutes left in the oven. And there's one minute left on the video. Baking sheet cut side down. Yeah, can we get some we we can the oven again weekends? So second bake to really draw out all the moisture. <laughs> Um, the biscotti are out of the Wait, oven. Wait, I need to see um, what biscotti they're is. Done because they're golden brown across the top and the sides, and they're very firm at this point. And now I'm gonna dip them in some chocolate because why would you want a hard cookie? Better, in my opinion, the minute they have chocolate on them, I'm using dark chocolate because I really love the combo of dark chocolate with almonds, and then transfer it onto a parchment lined baking sheet. You want to use Dude, it looks like fucking like bread over a double boiler. Biscottis are a little bit of a labor of love, but you know, the fact that you can eat them for like the next month and leave them in your pantry in an airtight container and they'll like they'll be good for a while makes it worth it. Grab one anytime you're looking for a little midday pick me up. Rachel saw biscotti and she wanted to Okay, if you so like hard here, cookies type 1. Tasting them. As a teenager, I was obsessed with biscottis. It's so good. It's buttery. You got a little bit of it's like a cracker from um, the almonds in there too. The dark chocolate is like what really makes it nostalgic for me. I just okay. realized I have a cut on my thumb. It's buttery. It's crumbly, and I love the nuts in this biscotti. I know a lot of people don't like nuts and things. Oh no! Well, in biscotti, you need it. Mm -hmm. Biscotti is definitely a little bit. Steppy. The fruit does for me, seem it's nice worth it because it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. It reminds me of when I was younger eating these with my parents. So it's wholesome dish for me. Okay, I think the and only one that looked kind of good like was the jam really one, but without the coconut. Buttery dough and wrap it in plastic. Sure, why not? Great, awesome. Let's do that. Oh, this is not the, <laughs> I've got the slidey edge. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> okay, let's find another one. Who made this? Where'd you get this? I like these little like Who tidbits. Where did you get this shrimp cocktail? It's where they so show like a little bit of how to make it. Snappier shrimp cocktail. Because like I think the thirty minute videos where they make one dish is like too much. That's too much dedication. I like getting like inspiration for what to make. Ever. <clears throat> Stick with us, Aunt Susan. Today we're in the test kitchen making our go-to appetizers. It's just the. Oh, uh, th this is um five pro chefs make their go-to appetizers. Most recent up. Little entry point to the evening. Everyone's over and we're drinking and there's snacky stuff out on the table. Honestly, I could make an entire meal of those. Ah! Today we're gonna show you. Time to check the oven. Okay, the one on the top is slightly more brown. So I'm gonna rotate them in the oven real quick. I don't have oven mitts, I have towels. Um, because what I found with oven mitts is sometimes like the fabric is too thin, so it it'll still burn me. So I just use like a double folded towel.
surprisingly light. Okay, I'm going to check on them in five minutes. Because I think the one I just put on the bottom will be done in five, but the one on top is probably going to need another ten. Timer for five. Yeah, my favorite way to make shrimp cocktail. Because like, there's not much crap cocktail, I can really like, do. Snaps and it's plumpy and it's poppy like, and it's just it's just good. The only thing I have left to do is melt the chocolate, but I think we have to wait until the cake cools. So yeah. <laughs> You thought I was gonna say a swore? Yeah, like you bite it, it's like a like a baseball bat. So we're gonna peel these, but leave that little bit of that tail on there, that little that top little half inch part of the shell. So I like to just kind of peel it around there, and then the rest kind of just slips off. And again, you want to save those shells, as that's gonna be the base Wait, for our how? for our co for our poaching liquid. Our, I've never seen our that. Shrimp stock court bullion. That's what we're looking for. Jumbo baby, nice. I always tell people, if you're going to make something like shrimp cocktail, just get the best shrimp that you have access to or can afford. We got salt, the baking soda, and massage the shrimp with them, let them sit for a half an hour. The end result will leave you with a shrimp texture after you poach it that is firm and snappy and plump. All right, for our poaching liquid, AKA poaching liquid, two quarts of water, 400 milliliters of white wine, fresh ginger root, lemongrass, one of my favorites. We got lemon, tarragon, a little parsley. <laughs> it's a lemon cut in half. I thought it was a whole ass lemon. <laughs> what happened to his finger? I don't know. I mean, you get cuts and scrapes all the time when you're cooking. Like, I think I cut myself on the cardboard box. But like, that blue medical tape is so nice. Because, like, it creates, like, a, an airtight seal to your finger so no water can get in. It's really nice. I want to get some. A couple shallots. Two, three, four, five of them. Put them right in, okay? Fresh bay leaves. Not dry. Fresh. <laughs> a little bit of celery seed. Four cloves of garlic. Crushed celery. And then a Granny Smith apple. Shrimp shells. Just a quick steep. It's all you really need with those shrimp shells. I mean, they're paper thin, but there's a lot of flavor in there, a lot of nutrients, and that's all gonna come out into that liquid rather quickly, so. Is it weird that I like eating fish or like shrimp tails? Like if we get like fried shrimp, I usually eat the tails and then my sister will give me hers. I don't like the texture, but I kind of like the taste because they're just like really crispy. I think I'm weird. Home run. We're just gonna do this for about 20, 30 minutes. Now it smells like shrimp stock. You can kind of individually smell a lot of the different ingredients from the lemon to the herbs. The apple adds a nice little sour sweetness to it. Extra layers of care and flavor are going to translate into the end product and leave your guests wow. All right, so we strained it off. It wasn't boiling, but it was probably, you know, 190, 200 degrees. Too hot for what we're trying to poach these in. So I put this into the fridge uh, and we brought it down to about 90 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our shrimp, put it on a medium heat, bring them up to 170, no more. Every now and then just a little gentle agitation. Let that- I think you know when you're a real cook if you have a thermometer. Because all of these videos, they always have thermometers. <laughs> water move around just want that heat to be nice and even i personally don't know an easier indicator or marker that it's done where you want it to be other than temping the liquid oh god 170 we're moving right into the bag i know it might seem like brad what are you doing putting hot shrimp in a bag buddy i'm gonna show you that's it and we're moving right into the into the ice water and the reason we're doing it in the bag was to not wash off all that effort that we did. Why Trying to wash know if you it all in. off? Why they're chilling out in the bag? Yeah, Let's Titans gifted ten sauce, earlier, right? so you got lucky. Mary Frances Heck, she turned me on to the chili sauce in shrimp cocktail, and it is game changer. I, there's no, it's the best way to do it. I love it. Ketchup, lemon juice, a little bit, just like that. Pink peppercorn, my favorite. Fruity. I gotta check aromatic. the oven. So it's thirty seconds left. Oh 
Dude, this is like perfect. But I should still test it. I don't have toothpicks, so I'm gonna use a fork. It's clean. Okay, one on top still needs five minutes, so we'll check on it. Okay, I'm gonna be very careful. Okay, I should turn the video off first. So you guys can see how perfectly brown this is. Very careful. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect. I personally like when my cakes aren't too dark, so this is like really good. Okay. Cake number one done. Thick, spicy horseradish, which I am fine with. If you got fresh and you want to grate it, one will be done in about out. five minutes. I have no problem with it prepared. That looks great. Oh, black pepper, just for fun. That's it, man. That is it. God. No one wants a wet shrimp on the platter, on the plate. All right? It should be nice. What it shouldn't do is look like that, where it's just hammered, okay? Overcooked, curled up, turned into seafood rubber. Not what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. You could do all this little silly platter stuff, get it all ready a couple hours before. Throw a little plastic wrap over it, and you're good to go, bud. Boom. Right in there. Come on, shrimp cocktail, baby. That looks so good. Plump, it's firm, snappy. Things coated and saturated, cooked in its own stock. It's wonderful. Pink peppercorn adds a nice little sweetness to it. A chili sauce, you can't beat it. Shrimp cocktail, made from scratch. Takes a little more time, but it's worth it. You're worth it. Your guests are worth it. The shrimp are worth it. You're worth it. Bon goat cheese and salami Today stuffed dates. Today we are making salami and goat cheese stuffed dates. I've never I had think dates, I don't think. Especially if you're entertaining, an appetizer should be low lift. I love dates because they are nature's gummy candy. They are only made better with the addition of meat and cheese. So what I'm doing right now is pitting the dates and slice in, not all the way through. So I just like to keep them in their sort of little Pac-Man-y shape. You could buy dates that are pitted. If you like, I like pitting them myself just because it's like a nice little meditative practice. Now what we're gonna do is chop up our salami. What you wanna get is like the pre-packaged sliced salami. You really just wanna cut them really, really tiny pieces. I don't think your five-year-old would like this snack. When you fold them into the cheese, they kind of meld together in a way that's really delightful. This is calabrese salami, which is spicy. Oh, Adding this is not good. In there is great. If Guys, these are adults use cooking. Spicy salami and you wanna add a pinch of red pepper flakes. Um, or something of course, like that. your you little baby palates aren't gonna like it. At all, and you wanna put a little bit of chili oil or chili crisp. Okay, so now we're gonna add a little okay, bit. Okay, just cause you don't think it looks good, would you try it? I would still try this shit. Of cheese, and you're kinda looking for like- I mean, for, like, nice things, not shit. A one to one ratio here. You want it to be pretty heavily both. This is go cheese. You could use any sort of like soft, malleable cheese. Something that's key here is you want your cheese to be room temperature because if it's cold, it will be hard and it won't want to mix up. Something else that we're gonna add is a little bit of black pepper. Depending on how peppery your salami is, you might wanna add more or less of that. And then I'm also gonna add just a little bit of lemon zest to help brighten it up, make it feel a little fresh. And now we're gonna stuff our dates, take a little spoon, Take your guy, and I, I like to not completely overstuff them because the dates are the main character. So yeah, I like don't the filling looks be, nice, like, but the so dates is kind of eh. Filling. I would still try it. Just enough to. Fill but like if this were on like a, a menu, if I wouldn't you order have it. Leftover filling and people a eat all left. dates, but they're still interested in noshing for more. Just throw some triscuits out, and people can like spread and eat, and then that's a delight as well. We're gonna finish up our plate by doing a little bit of a rough chop on these toasted pistachios. 
You always want to toast your nuts. It just brings out the flavor a little bit. It's about aesthetics. It's about adding this green pop of color and also about flavor and texture. I'm just going to do a little tiny drizzle of honey. The second came out perfect. It's like literally a perfect browning on it. Bro. I didn't turn the timer off. This is like literally perfect. Look at that. Because this one is a bit more brown on the side closest to me. Okay, so what's also nice about this panware is that they cool pretty quickly. Like, okay, don't, <laughs> do not touch pans with your bare hands, okay? Do not do that, that's crazy shit. But I took that one out five minutes ago and it's almost cooled. Okay, so to make cake pops now, we need to let those fully cool and then we mix the frosting in and then we dip them in chocolate. So cho melted chocolate is only like malleable for so long before it starts hardening. So you can't really prep that in advance. Huh. I'm trying to think, because like I don't have a large mixing bowl. So when I'm like mixing the cake into the frosting, I think I'm gonna use a pot. Because <laughs> you know that works, right? <laughs> I don't have any big bowls. So either this or the rice pot. <laughs> okay, bye Luigi. We'll see you later, hon. Okay. So the cakes are probably gonna take like 10, 15 minutes to cool. So we'll finish this video and then hopefully You're by then- You're basically creating glue for cakes will the be pistachios done. to stick to. And again, I like getting the like more powdery, finer bits, which you can see like kind of at the bottom here. I like to scoop those up and make sure that they get their dusting because I think that's very pretty. And then um, the bigger pieces can come in at the end. They do look cute. They look so like potatoes. So these are our salami <laughs> and goat cheese stuff. Like baby potatoes. And honey. The delight in them is that they are a one-biter. They are a pretty full one-biter. <laughs> but they are so gum. There's just the right amount of filling. Cheesy, salty, a little spice, a little heat, a little richness, meatiness, and the crunch from the pistachio. I love them. These are big party energy. Today, I'll be making a version of a furikake Czech mix that is just Ooh. so addictive. Oh, this shit is good. It's sweet, it's a little salty, umami packed. I really love an old fashioned. It's a classic cocktail, and I think you can really stand up to a lot of the powerful flavors. What kind of party here. would that be? Like I love to make a riff using. Okay, when do you eat normal Czech mix? Like, you bring Czech mix to a potluck if you can't cook. That's what this is for. Remy Martin XO Cognac. First things first, we're gonna make Movie our night? syrup. It's our binder. We're adding a neutral oil. Oh, light dates corn to the party. Syrup, sugar, butter, soy sauce. The ranch seasoning packet adds an addictive quality to anything it touches. You just want everything to dissolve. We're not looking to boil this. We just want to make a homogenous mixture, a nice kind of caramel color. Just let it cool for like a minute, and then let's get going on our ingredients. This is I would never think to combine fun, these things. Uh, part of the recipe. <laughs> just going for the bugles. Pretzels, again, just eyeball it. Perfect. Honeycomb cereal, also delicious here. Cheddar goldfish, dry roasted peanuts. This is like the perfect dry mix for me. So we're gonna hand mix, be very gentle. Pour the syrup in two batches. I'm gonna sprinkle on the foodie cooking here. This one has sesame seeds, nori seaweed, sugar, salt, Good job, and some MSG. Almost which starting a really fire. Helps to bump up the flavor profile all around. Oh, that's like something I've had to like be careful of. 
because since this house has AC, like, you don't want to put stuff on top of the vents. Like, I don't, I don't think anything bad could happen, but I, I grilled my sister the other day because she was leaving her shoes on the vents, and they were warm. Granted, probably not warm enough to, like, f catch a flame, but still, I, I grilled her a little bit. I was like, don't do that shit. That's how we die. <laughs> You do want to work quickly. Check the bottom of the bowl. Make sure nothing is pooling down there. The furikake is so good at getting in the nooks and crannies. The of sound the is rice nice. And corn cereals. I would divide this amount into two pans. You want it flat, but it doesn't have to be a single layer per se. So these are ready to go in your oven. It's set at 250, which is very low, I know, but this is a low and slow operation. Don't try to rush it. Now it's time for our cocktail. So an old fashioned cocktail uses scotch whiskey. And children, close I thought your ears. it would be really nice to riff on that using cognac. This is really bold in its flavor. That's really bold in its flavor, but somehow they really work well together. So we have these really cute brown sugar cubes and we're going to just douse them with aromatic bitters. I'm gonna use the classic Angostura as well as a uh, whiskey barrel aged one. So you need the sugar to be dissolved. The essential oils and the orange peel work so well in complementing the bitters, the cognac, the sugar, really just tying everything together. This, this is like too much. Like a party. You it's get too complicated. Some honey notes, some spice notes, floral notes. Mmm, so smooth, really complex. It's giving me cloves and spices, and our commitment to the citrus and the orange is so complimentary. <laughs> I, I thought I forgot to, to turn the oven off and I got scared, but I'm good. I'm looking for some kind of clumpy. Clump okay, I don't have OCD, but I do have like compulsive tendencies to where like i'll leave home and then a block later i'll be like did i lock the door and then i'll walk back home and then, like i'll check the lock multiple times like i, I do shit like like little things like that and i'm like uh oh anyway three bits like look at this this is gonna be for me it's so addictive. If the camera wasn't on me, I would just like dive in. <laughs> this snack really works so well. Well, that with looks this so good. On an old fashioned. It's got citrus, there's spice. There's just a lot going on, but this drink can definitely handle all the complexities and tastiness involved in this snack. Peppery antipasto skewers. Today, my skewers. appetizer is an antipasto skewer. Um, this was actually one of the first recipes I ever developed for BA. There's just something about this combination that's very simple but delivers big on flavor, and I think the visual appeal is really I've never heard of this. Too. We have the ribeye. Um, I got a cast iron skillet here. I'm gonna do kosher salt, really generous on the seasoning, um, and also a ton of black pepper. Personally, I love a lot of black pepper on my steak. I think it adds a ton and gives a solid base flavor that pairs really well with the cheese, too. Okay, okay. I don't like touching, like, raw meat with my bare hands. Like, I use gloves all the time. I, I hate touching it. Because then I, I get in my head, and I'm like, I touch the steak, and then I touch the fridge. I'm like, did it? I'm getting raw shit all over my kitchen. I don't know. It, it, it just weirds me out, like, seeing videos with people, like, not wearing gloves. I don't know. Like, the other day, I was making chicken. Oh, I have to eat lunch. Remind me to eat lunch later. I could be eating right now. <laughs> Should I eat right now? 12 o'clock. Uh, I can wait till 1. Neutral oil. You like want I, to I was making chicken. Like that. And no way I can handle raw bit, chicken so without gloves. Sure everything's getting some contact with the cast iron. Then I'm going to let it should, go for yeah. like 3 minutes <laughs> and then we'll flip it and do another 3 minutes. So when you leave it undisturbed, you get like Okay, a let's do a poll. Should I <laughs> what should I eat for lunch cuz I have two options. I have two options. Should I have leftover chicken or pizza rolls? Cuz I begged my sister for us to get pizza rolls cuz you know when you see in the story like, "Ah, do I need it?" And you're like, "Ah, should I get it?" And she finally gave it. What should I have for lunch? Should I have 
Chicken or pizza rolls? Go vote. A really gorgeous sear. You can see all of this part of the steak had really strong contact with the cast iron. The meat has been resting for 15 minutes. All of the fat is going to be contained. It's going to be nice and juicy. You want to cut against the grain into nice, like, thin strips. It's really beautifully cooked. It's a nice um, medium, medium rare. If you're going to have steak in one bite, you want to make sure that your meat is pretty thin. So for the cheese, I went with Comte today, which is one of my favorites. You could also use like pepper jack, cheddar, parm, whatever you like. And then for peppers, we did um, the sweet um, pickled cherry peppers and some pepperoncini too. Again, use whatever pickly, briny thing you like. Just make sure whatever's going between this um, steak is salty, ideally a little bit crunchy and a little spicy too. So I'm gonna start with this one. Thread the skewer through sort of um, the right edge of the piece of steak. And then I'm gonna go in with a cube of cheese. I would love this if it were just the steak pepper. and the cheese on the skewer. And then- I don't like any of the nose. Pull the edge, the other edge through to secure it. And that's one way you can do it, very simple. The second way, you wanna find a nice long piece. You got some cheese and some pepper. And you're just gonna roll it up. And then it's like a little bundle. And it's the entire thing is encased. Now I'm gonna finish them with some olive oil, flaky salt, and black pepper. This just makes everything look nice and pretty. Also gives something for the salt and the pepper to stick onto. And just in case. Those are some fancy scores. They had like little pearls on the ends. So you didn't season the steak well enough you have another opportunity. So cute. Okay, there you go. These are my peppery antipasto skewers. It's the perfect bite because you get a ton of acidity from the pickled pepper, creamy, mild saltiness from this cheese. And then the steak just sort of pulls everything together, makes it feel substantial. Okay, just pizza like rolls a, one, a I'll make bite. pizza rolls. It's super flavorful, very convenient, <laughs> and really easy too. The fried potato poppers. Oh, I saw a video on this when the other day. appetizers, my mind automatically goes fried. There's just something so enticing and something so great about starting a meal with something fried. The thing I love most about fried potato poppers is sort of just like the textural element you get. What we have here is we have some day old mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my chives. So these mashed potatoes actually have garlic and thyme. I feel like those are two really simple ways to elevate your mashed potato. Then I'm gonna add this already cooked bacon. I have it really finely chopped. So I'm gonna, with my hand, sort of like move my mashed potatoes from the bottom to the top, just to ensure that everything is fully mixed. Anyway, I flip it, look at it. I should be able to see bacon and I should be able to see chive. I'm gonna take a small amount of my potato mixture in my hand. I'm sort of just going to roll it in some of my egg mixture. I only use Japanese panko. I think that that texture is unmatched. Just want to make sure that it's completely covered. You know, Poppers are a great pantry cleaner. I think that you could really fill this with whatever you have lying around. I'm going to drop them into the deep fryer at 375 for about three to five minutes or until like they're fully golden brown and crispy. The sound of frying food is music to my ears. It's looking very beautiful just shaking off any excess oil before I get them on my sheet tray. I'm just gonna hit them with just a pinch of salt. Everything inside is already pretty well oh, seasoned. Were red, this is just like to ensure that our panko is getting some of that flavor. They're not gonna be piping hot. Our panko is also acting as some sort of barrier. So the stuff on the inside is going to be cooked and warm, but it's not gonna be like singeing your mouth. I have a little bit of chives here that I'm gonna sort of like sprinkle on them just for another fresh bite. These are my fried potato poppers. They're golden, they're delicious, they're super simple, and a great way to turn your leftovers into something completely different. Cakes are almost delicious. cold, probably this like five-ish minutes. This is almost giving me loaded potato minutes, naturally, probably. but almost like french fries too. It is truly the perfect one bite experience. I wanna try and make the potatoes. Those look there like easy enough. That's the stuff. Right into the sink, start over. <laughs> mm. Who made this shrimp? Where'd you get this shrimp? Oh, this one is good. I love this one. Hey, everybody. This is Emil Stonic, editor for Basically um, Every Way to Cook an Egg, 59 Methods. Bon Appetit. And this is almost every way to cook an egg. First we did chicken, now we're doing egg. 
This is an egg. Ovular in shape, they come in a lot of different colors, but there's not a whole lot of difference on what's on the inside. Size, however, does matter as it affects the cook time. So for consistency, today we're just using large brown eggs. When you crack them, you can see that they're brown comprised of a runny white shit. and a yellow orange center or yolk, which both contain different proteins that coagulate or harden at different temperatures. So just a few degrees Dude, of this difference ain't even HD. in what cooking temperature or time are gonna have a profound impact on how the final egg turns out. We're gonna take these eggs and cook them in as many ways as we can possibly think of. I like so putting you can ranch see the on my pizza and rolls. The end results. Raw egg. Okay, we couldn't start this video different? on all of the ways to cook eggs without also doing a few ways to not cook eggs. You know, people eat raw eggs all the time, but we're just gonna take an egg, crack it into a glass, it's nice and cold, and that is an egg shot. This is literally just an egg cracked into a glass. There's nothing else going on. Cheers. It doesn't actually taste like that much because there's no salt or anything else in there. So it's just kind of a weird textural sensation. Prairie oyster egg. A raw egg is a raw egg, but a raw egg, once you put it into a cup and put a little bit of salt and some Tabasco and some Worcestershire on it, well, then you have what's called a prairie oyster. Apparently this is good for a hangover, though I have my doubts. Let's give it a shot. Huh? It definitely tastes more than a raw egg. The smell <laughs> is really hard to get out of your nose once you've swallowed it. I have my We're pizza rolls. Yet. Amber moon egg. You've had a raw egg. I purposely like unmicrowave them because I don't I don't like hot hot foods. So like they're they're not frozen, but they're not like fully cooked. That way I don't have to wait to eat them. We've had a prairie oyster. Now we're gonna make something called an amber moon, which is basically all of those things plus liquor. Now it's a cocktail. All right, there it is, an amber moon. Bottoms up, cowboy. It's who who would spicy, order this? It's salty. The only thing that's hard is actually the quantity of liquid. But I actually think that if I was hungover and I drank this, I would either vomit and go back to bed or move on with my day in a pretty cool way. Sunny side up egg. What we're looking for here is no color or crispiness on the white and then a yolk that's just runny and ready to burst. We're not gonna flip it, a little bit of salt, and there you have it, our sunny side up egg. Dude, this my looks favorite. Like an egg. The white is kind of slippery in a really appealing way, and that yolk yeah, is ready I to do pop. That too. It's barely gelled. This is what you want for your rice bowl or on top of something like a mushroom toast. It's delicious and very simple. Olive oil fried egg. This time, crispiness is the name of the game, so we need high heat. Throwing on my salt, and that, my friends, is an olive oil fried egg. You have this nice contrast between these really so my dad makes lacy some. edges, and then right here is just barely cooked. Mm, so you're getting a lot of flavor from the olive oil and a nice texture. My dad used to work at a diner when he was younger, so he knows how to make like any type of egg. It's pretty cool. Contrast between the super rich I'm like, Father, yolk and this can you make this for me? White. This is definitely one of our perfect. favorite ways to cook an egg. Olive oil fried and basted egg. We're gonna fry another egg, but this time we're gonna baste it, which means we're gonna spoon hot olive oil over the top of the egg while it cooks. Ooh, yeah, that hurt. Doesn't feel good, but we're not gonna be a baby about it. Oh, I'd so be a little bit. The biggest difference here, where the last time we had a little bit of uncookedness right around the yolk, here it's completely cooked. Mmm, that tastes great. And this is a great way to make a fried egg for somebody who's kind of likes that runny yolk, but is squeamish about uncooked white. Olive oil fried and steamed egg. This time, instead of basting the egg with hot oil, we're this gonna is what add a little of water and cover it, which is gonna produce steam that's gonna help to cook the egg. And we're gonna leave it in there for probably about a minute. So because right it makes the, the white fully cooked, basically. Quite a bit of this crispy outside part, and it's pretty well browned underneath. You still this is have my favorite. that nice runniness, but again, it's much thicker than some of the other yolk that we've been dealing with. Mmm, it's good. Over easy, over medium, and over hard eggs. We're gonna cook them for about two to three minutes on this first side, and the only difference between these three eggs is once we flip them, they're gonna spend different amounts of time on that second side, which is gonna dramatically change the texture of the yolk. So here we have our three classic diner eggs. So over easy, you can see the white is still super tender and in the yolk is just barely cooked. It's very fluid and runny. The over medium, the yolk is definitely a little bit more cooked. It's thicker and kind of oozing out a lot more slowly. And here with the over hard, you can see the yolk is completely cooked. It almost looks like an eight minute boiled egg or something like that. And the white is definitely a little bit rubbery for that one. So something for everyone. Salt block fried egg. The idea here is that it retains a lot of heat and it'll. <laughs> Let me just whip out my salt block.
maybe season the egg somewhat. It's also taking a really long time to cook. So there's your salt block fried egg. It's good, but it's definitely not the most efficient or effective way to cook an egg. McMuffin egg. We're gonna use a ring mold, which is gonna contain the egg so it doesn't just leak out everywhere. We want that yolk. I love one of those. Because, like, I was making breakfast sandwiches, like, to prep in the freezer. And I wanted to make, like, the ring eggs so I could put them in muffins. But I didn't have one. So I made um, a sheet tray of eggs in the oven. And then I made breakfast sandwiches with sliced bread. I want to get a ring mold. Yolk to be fully cooked because you're going to eat it in the car. And there we have a perfect egg McMuffin egg. The main benefit of this is definitely portability and for anybody who's fully disgusted by runny yolk. Cracked and scrambled egg. We're just going to crack these eggs directly into a pan that's set over medium to medium. I low make a heat. perfect We're just scrambled egg. Scramble them as we go. We don't want it to be too hot, otherwise, our eggs are going to get cooked too quickly. Always make sure to pull your scrambled eggs before you think they're done to account for carryover cooking. There you have it, cracked in the pan and scrambled. So what you're gonna notice here are these kind of distinct bits, like that's mostly yolk, here you have mostly white. You definitely have some bits which are a lot richer and some that are a little bit leaner, but there's nothing wrong I with I used to never season my eggs. eggs. But Lone then once I start it, I can never not season right, my eggs. All right, eggs round two. This time we're gonna beat them first and we're gonna cook them really low and slow, which is my favorite way to make eggs. You're continuing to stir so you don't have any kind of big sheets of egg. We want the texture to almost be like ricotta or cottage cheese. And there you have some beautiful soft scrambled eggs. Oh you my God. The texture is Look like how curdy. yellow it the is. The French would use the term bavousse, which actually means dog snot. Delicious, right? <laughs> there are a lot of people who would think That's that eggs snot? like this are kind of undercooked. To me, this is perfect. Hot and fast scrambled egg. Scrambled eggs, round three, but hot and fast this time. We're gonna beat the eggs together, make sure they're fully incorporated, and you're gonna have to start moving these eggs around as soon as they hit the pan. They're gonna cook in less than a minute. Unlike last time where you had that kind of curdy texture, this time we're- Making it like this is so bad. I always try and I always burn them and it tastes so nasty. I, I usually do low and slow for scrambled eggs. Going for little ribbons I like the curdled texture. of egg. And these are our hot and fast scrambled eggs. These are not overcooked. They're not rubbery by any means, but you do definitely have a little bit more of the texture of the pan. It's not quite something that you would spoon up. You really want to get your fork in there. Put that on some toast. Boiled eggs. So we're going to set four separate timers. Five minutes, six and a half minutes, eight minutes, and ten minutes. The eggs are all going to go at the same time into already boiling I'm going to check the cakes because I'm done with my lunch. These things go off, get I want to eat ice more, baths, but which helps separate the I think I had like ten the actual pizza egg pockets. Itself. You can't eat a boiled egg without peeling it <laughs> One first. serving it's size It's interesting is to six. note that it's actually easier to peel an egg that is older <laughs> rather than a super farm fresh egg. And voila, a boiled egg. Okay, so looking at all these boiled eggs, we're really able to see the way that time affects the white and the yolk. Let's start here with our five minute egg. You can see it has an almost runny white and a completely liquid yolk. Great for dipping toast into. This is our six and a half minute egg. I feel like this has the most appealing sort of contrast between that really soft yolk and a fully cooked white. Next up, our eight minute egg. There's Dude, no runny whatsoever. The yolk is still very orange and isn't chalky at all. That's really nice. And last but not least, we have our 10 minute egg. Firm whites and a yellow yolk that has just a bit of that orange jamminess. This is like the kind of thing I just want to keep in the fridge to pull out whenever I'm super hungry. Steamed egg. So we've boiled eggs, but now we're gonna mm -hmm. steam them. This is effectively the same thing. Cool I'm thing about this is you don't have to wait for a whole pot of, of water to boil. And it doesn't matter how many eggs you put in so I just realized the video is covering me. No. I'm debating if I want to take the cakes out of the pan and have them like dry on a tray. Because it would cool faster. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try that. <clears throat> I'm going to do it over another tray. That way, if any of the cake falls through, then it'll catch. I'm scared. I'm scared. Wait.
Uh oh. Oh no. It's not coming out. Uh oh. Yeah, that's a problem. Wait, I heard it, I heard it. That came up perfectly. No way. It's fine, it's fine. It was really greasy. It looks like a lot of the olive oil went to the bottom. See? $20 pants? Worth it. Easy. Okay. So I have the cakes cooling on a rack. So they'll dry or they'll cool faster. Crazy. I'm a klutz. I mean, they do come out of the pan easier when they're fully cool, but I kind of want to get them out now. Easy! Because, like, I, when I was trying to convince my sister to buy these, I was like, please, please. You don't understand how easy it'll be. Okay. You, you can see this one is much darker. But that's because this one was on the bottom rack for longer. It's still pretty solid. Okay, so probably... I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Because I could... Like, mix the frosting in now and put it in the fridge. I think I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. No more dilly-dallying. Break time's over. It's work time. I'm um, talking about work. We are nearly two hours in the stream. So it's about time for me to run an ad. Also, because I don't want to rewash my hands later. <laughs> so... If you want to avoid the ad, all you got to do is subscribe for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Any primers? Anyway, get some water, get a snack. We'll see some of you guys in a few. Okay, let's get some music on. We'll we'll finish that video later. Yeah, I heckin' love Amazon Prime. Okay, we're gonna mask on. Glove up. Dude, it's so hard putting the mask on with glasses on. Okay, there we go. I stole some of my sister's masks. Don't tell her. Because they fit me better. Because we both got like multi packs from Wish, but the ones she got fit better than mine. Okay. So, plant. We're gonna wash your hands. Crumble the cakes, mix frosting in, let it cool in the fridge. I need more icing. I think it says Because I think it said one cup of icing to one sheet cake. One cup is eight ounces, so one tub is sixteen. So it'll be one tub for both of these about. Okay. Now wash your hands again.
maybe today I can get those pans washed and then we can bake the cake and cut the dough for tomorrow. So that way tomorrow we decorate less. I forgot to turn the water off. Maybe we'll do that. So I think what I'll do is once these cakes have the frosting mixed in and is put in the fridge to chill, then we'll get two more cakes started. That way tomorrow, <clears throat> we can just like decorate. Okay, hands are washed, the gloves are coming on. I was gonna make it your mom joke, but it's gonna be a bit too vulgar. <laughs> okay, anyway. I'm gonna move this to the stove top. I have no room on the stove top. I have, since I'm going to be touching the cake directly, I cannot touch anything that's non-food. So I'm going to be using paper towels as a barrier. Hmm. I don't really have the right turner tool that I'm looking for. You could just use a regular spatula. Okay. Oh, and then we need a turner. Fuck. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put the cake into the pot, crumble it, and then gradually add icing. It's like perfect. I love these pans. Okay, so as I'm putting it in, I'm just crumbling. This is gonna be a very hands-on activity. Yeah, the cake is a bit dry, but it's probably because of the Malka. But it feels like super soft. I want to try a piece, but I need to like reserve every piece I make. Halfway there. It is satisfying crumbling the cake. It's kind of like those slime videos. You know, where they have like a ball and then they squish it and it explodes with slime. It's reminiscent of that. This is making my hands hurt. <laughs> like, I don't know if I could do this all day in the factory. Another thing I was thinking about is gonna be so, like, agonizing packaging all these. <laughs> Guess who almost got fired? Me? Welcome in next story time. I was late. Damn. I think it's kind of 
silly how employers can fire you if you're late or um what you call it or if you call out too many times because it's just like if you're still doing the job well it don't really matter it's mainly an issue of like are there enough people staffed hmm Because at my sister job, she's at a factory, right? So if, like, two people call out, it's no big deal. Like, it's totally different if you're doing, like, a shift swap. So, like, um... If, like, when their shift ends, you come in, I kind of understand that. But otherwise, it's no big deal. Like, I don't care. Like, functionality is important, but it's not the most important thing, in my opinion. Okay, cake number two. These feel rubbery almost. Like the bottom, it's so shiny. Wait, look. What? Do you see that? That? Look at that. It's like a. It's like a holographic car. Look how shiny it is. All that Teflon. Thirty seconds late. Bro, what the fuck? Your manager's just being petty as fuck, then. Dude, 30 seconds? That's insane. Yeah, I'm trying to, like, crumple up the more brown bits. Because they aren't crumbling as easily. Delicious. <laughs> Delicioso. <laughs> Would you eat this type one? I think I'm gonna get carpal tunnel. Two? You wanna eat my cake pops? It's literally just cake crumble. They're dry. No, it's not. I promise you, it's perfect. I have 10,000 five-star reviews that are all real. I mean, totally not bucks. I'm gonna get tinnitus. Wait, no, wait. Tinnitus is ringing in your ears. I meant to say carpal tunnel. <laughs> Oopsie. It does look kind of sad crumpled up though. Ball right now. Look at that! Wow! World's biggest cake pop? Maybe I should not have put the bottoms in. Because, like, the bottoms aren't crumbling as well. Uh, for now on, I won't put the bottoms in. <laughs> I'll, I'll just uh, save them for later.
<laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna put the bottoms of the cake anymore. It's that was a mistake. Yeah, tops only. <laughs> Look at this. Two whole she cakes crumbled. Ready to be part. I'm gonna swap my gloves. Cause th they were like so oily. I know I can't feel it, but in my head I feel it. Okay, so one box of cake mix is eight ounces of frosting. Since we did two, we can mix in a whole container of frosting. Oh, it smells good. It's just regular vanilla. I should make like a, a pocket. Or not a pocket, like a well. It's where you put like a little divot in the center. It sounds like a lullaby. Like something that'd be playing out of like a little baby's mobile. You like the cooking streams? Good. We'll definitely do more now that we have like a proper kitchen set up. Okay, this is incredibly hard to mix. Okay. Let's get some more icing in. Ideally, once this is fully combined, because to me, cake pops have the texture more so of like pudding, or like what I imagine cake tastes like when it's halfway cooked. It'd be cool if I had like a bird's eye cam for the kitchen. I'm gonna save up for that nicer Sony camera. One day, copium. I want to use my hands to mix. It seems so fun. It looks like it has the texture of like that moon sand. with the spatula and then, then I'm gonna go in with my hands get in there you know okay, it's just about there let's see yeah Hold it with my left. Oh, this feels so nice! I like this a lot. It's- it's just like... It's just like slime. I wish I could hold it like this. Yummy slime.
It looks like cookie batter. Okay, I think I have it just about fully mixed. The confetti makes it look brown. But I think it's also because I put the bottom bits of the cake in. So for the next batches, I won't do that. I don't know how many cake pops this one will make. Hopefully enough, because like I bought 200 cake pop sticks. I know the title says 100, but I'll probably make like however much. What do you call it? However much, like. Like four to six cake boxes make. Off, though like it's if I squish it it's like falling it's not holding a shape well so once it's fridged it'll be better this is this is so fun to play with though um do this with your children or your nieces and nephews okay so we're gonna let this fridge for a little bit and while it's fridging Hmm. Try to think. Cause I I think today we'll decorate this batch and we'll get another round of cake started. So let's get this in the fridge. Get another round of cake started. It says you can fridge it for like up to a few days before you ice them and then you gotta freeze them <laughs> the people eating the cake pops yeah i'm just gonna plug my twitch let's go okay let's see we're gonna get another batch of cake started oh i can separate more eggs yeah Damn, damn, damn. I have to- okay, I gotta wash the trays first. <laughs> Chef Megan unlocked, exactly. Okay, we're gonna get another batch of cake started. So, I have to wash the dishes. And then separate eggs and then just portion again. So, I'll put the video back on for you guys. That way you have something to watch as I wash dishes, okay? Okay. YouTube time. In there, they're all gonna have the same amount of steam circulating around them, which is really cool. And here we have our steamed egg. Okay. So what we have right here is a really nice looking eight minute egg. The white is very tender. We've got this nice jammy looking yolk. Personally, this is one of my favorite methods for hard boiling eggs. Instant Pot Egg. Welcome to hell, kids. This is an Instant Pot. It's a pressure cooker. It's a slow cooker. It does a lot of other things that you can probably do with other things you already have in your kitchen. We're gonna set this thing to five minutes. We're gonna get that egg in there. And when it's done, we're gonna vent it, which releases the pressure. And there you go. All right, what? so here we have our pressure cooked egg. <laughs> to me, that's an overcooked Sorry, boiled loud, egg. It? This actually took longer and did a worse job. So yeah, steaming, boiling, a much better option sous vide egg. Normally something is sealed inside a plastic pouch and then put into a water bath that's at a consistent temperature for a specific amount of time. In this case, no bag, the egg is its own bag. So we're just gonna let that immersion circulator move the water around at that very consistent temperature for around 45 minutes and we're good to go. So this is our sous vide egg. The yolk's wiggly, the white's wiggly, everything's wiggly. Mmm, that's delicious. The sensation in your mouth is almost like an egg jelly. But if runny eggs are not your thing, this is not for you. Pickled egg. So now we're gonna have some fun with our eight minute boiled eggs by pickling them in a beet infused vinegar mixture. So we've got some distilled white vinegar, a cup of water, some salt, sugar, and then we're gonna throw in some beets. And once that comes to a boil, we're gonna know our mixture is ready, put a lid on it, and boom. Now we're just gonna wait. 
And here we have our pickled eggs. These have been sitting in that pickling liquid for 24 hours. It's tasty. You definitely get some of the sweetness of the beet. Definitely get the sugar. This would make a really nice addition to a picnic spread. Tea egg. We're gonna take cinnamon, star anise, peppercorns, cloves, fennel seed, sugar, salt, soy sauce, and of course, tea. We've got our soft boiled eggs. We're gonna crack them all over with the back of the spoon. Then we're gonna submerge them in this liquid and let them cook for about 30 minutes. We're gonna add some ice, which is gonna cool things off. Then we're gonna cover them with the marinade to let them pick up even more color over the course of the next day. Look at that beautiful tea stained egg. It's got this stained glass looking exterior. It's delicious. You really get those spices. This is a really fun way to eat an egg. Poached egg, the brunch time favorite. We don't actually want this water to be boiling. It's just at the barest simmer. And then we're gonna use our spoon to create a vortex. And then we're gonna plop the egg right in it, which is gonna help to kind of blast off any of the wispy parts. See, now it's starting to form a kind of a nice little package. I'm actually pretty impressed with myself. This is hard to do. So here you can tell that the white is totally cooked, and when you poke it, you can tell that the yolk is still nice and fluid, almost like a yolk water balloon. This is the platonic ideal of the poached egg. This is awesome. Egg poached in tomato sauce. Basically, the idea is you have a that hot tomato-based sauce, and then you're gonna create a little well in the middle of it, pop your egg right in there, and let the heat of the simmering sauce cook the eggs. In a dream world, the white is all cooked, and the yolk is still a little bit runny. See, I'm kind of concerned here that the bottom part of the egg got the lion's share of the heat. The tomato sauce is kind of an imprecise cooking medium, so it's not conducting heat as consistently as a pan full of water is going to. But it does add a lot of flavor, which is exciting. I don't know, I could go either way on this one. Microwave scrambled eggs. We're gonna use this little egg holder to make scrambled eggs. Got a little bit of milk to help it out, and then put that in the microwave for 40 seconds. Mmm, breakfast. I gotta be real, this looks pretty Pretty gross. I don't know why you would do this. Don't. Microwave poached egg. Microwave round two, revenge of the microwave. This time, we're gonna try to poach an egg. Yeah, why would you 27 this? seconds. That is an egg poached in the microwave? This is not good. This looks really, really gross. The microwave might save some time, but it also makes bad eggs. Pass. It's never gonna be good. George Foreman egg. All right, this is a George Foreman grill. You know it, you love it. We're gonna open this up, non-stick spray, crack an egg on there, close it, and walk away. And that, my friends, is an egg cooked on a George Foreman grill. I mean, this is a depressing way to cook an egg, you know? It's fully cooked, the yolk is pretty gnarly looking. I mean, if you had to, you could cook an egg this way. If I just, you had to, like, I'm really absolutely sorry. needed to. Waffle iron egg. I mean, we've used every other appliance in the kitchen, so we may as well try a waffle iron. I'm just going to lube it up a little bit, crack an egg right in there, and close this. Wow, there's a lot of steam coming off of this guy. Oh my god, that is our waffle iron cooked egg. This looks like some kind of alien, like a face hugger or something. You can definitely see that the yolk is pretty unpleasant and overcooked. I just, yeah, this is not a particularly delicious egg. Waffled egg, not so much. Blowtorched egg. This is an egg, this is a blowtorch. We're gonna crack this egg right onto a sheet pan and then we're gonna cook it with our blowtorch. We've got a little diffuser on here to kind of help disperse the heat a little bit more evenly. And we're just gonna blast this thing with open flame until it's done, I guess? Oof, this, uh, I think we can say this is not an effective way to cook an egg. Diner style omelet. All right, so we've got our pan on medium heat. We're gonna put a little butter in there to heat up until it's almost browning. We really wanna beat these eggs together until we don't see any streaks of egg white. We're gonna pour the eggs in, and as you can see, it's starting to cook immediately. So I'm just gonna kind of start nudging it along with my spatula, then fold it over, flip that out, and that is your diner style omelet. So a diner style omelet is normally kind of a blank canvas for all of the sorts of fillings that you might put into it. It's not normally about the eggs themselves. This would be delicious with some ham and peppers and cheese. French omelet. This time, we're using low heat, and this is gonna come together much more slowly. We're gonna beat our eggs, get a little bit of butter in the pan, we're gonna pour our eggs in, and then we're gonna start stirring constantly. We want the kind of curdy sort of texture. As soon as we start to form a little bit of skin, we're gonna start rolling, and then we're gonna flip it out, and voila. That is a French omelet. This is a much more refined, delicate style of omelet. This is all about the egg. You don't really need to add any toppings or fillings here. Very creamy, very tender. This is a beautiful way to cook an egg. 
souffle omelet. This is a modern novelty omelet. So in this case, we're gonna separate the whites and the yolks. We're gonna beat the whites until they're fluffy like you would for a meringue. Then we're gonna fold the yolks back into the whites, transfer that to a hot pan with butter, put a plate over top to make sure the top cooks as well. And then we're gonna fold it, flip it out onto the plate, and that is a souffle omelet. This is huge. That's because of all of the air that we beat into the eggs before. That looks so good. I don't think I could ever make it though. A bit difficile. Okay, back to work. No more time off task. We were frames wrong. Before I start though, I want to try the actual cake. It's the uh, excess bottom bits. For the bottom crust of a cake, it's still pretty good. I mean, you can't really go wrong with cake mix, right? But I think for the rest of the pops, I won't put the bottom in. Ready, so I gotta work quick. I'm gonna bring everything to the table first. hungry because like the thing about pizza pockets is that they're never filling maybe I need water I haven't drank it in a while So plant, we're gonna get these next two cakes in the oven. While they're in the oven, we can start melting the chocolates. Gentle reminder, since I am cooking for a mass amount of people, I will be masking up and wearing gloves. flavor. Because I think if you just get like the cheese flavor, then you're an actual child. <laughs> Surprisingly, I'm not too tired yet. ones because the lack of cheese. Eh. I like the sauce. That's why I like the meat ones more.
Okay, I'm gonna do the oils and stuff first. I'm gonna mix everything into one bowl and just divide them up into the two trays. So I need one cup total oil. Oh, so the Animal Crossing event for Christmas is on Christmas Eve. So we'll do it during the um, Santa Watch stream. I don't know if I'm going to stream on Christmas. Like, I'm not going to be going home. I'm probably going to stay home. So I don't know what I'm going to do for Christmas. I might, like, just go out to eat. Because, like, imagine, think about it. Imagine how sad it is to stream on holiday. I need one and a quarter cup milk. I'll be watching, so I guess that's sad. See, like, I thought about that, too. Because, like, mine did go to streamers for song, obviously. I watched over a thousand hours this past year. And it's like... He always streams on holiday, but he still celebrates with people, you know? And that's cute. Because he was saying, like, he streams on holiday because he knows some people, like, have to work and some people don't have, like, a family to celebrate with. I was like, oh, that's really sweet. And, uh, not to overshare, but I'm not going home for holiday this year. I just don't feel comfortable yet. Like, I want to leave a bit more space between my parents and I. And I think that's totally fine. But it's still, like... I have to, like, learn how to navigate it, I guess. Because my sister is going back home for dinner, but I'm not. So, granted, I'll see my sister in the morning, but not for the evening time. Oh, that was perfect. How pro. Okay, I need to figure out how many eggs I need. There we go. <gasps> yeah, because I think you said you guys celebrate on Christmas Eve, yeah? Mac? I mean, I definitely think Christmas is more fun when you're younger. Okay, I'm doing the same technique. Where I'm cracking my eggs into separate bowls. I remember separating whites being so much more difficult. But this ain't that bad. I haven't, like, cracked a yolk into my whites yet. Don't jinx it! I'm only three out of eight eggs in. Okay, I kind of botched this one. I, I broke it the wrong way. Oh, fuck. This... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This is really bad. I'm throwing. I'm throwing. <laughs> I fucked up. I fucked up. This one's bad. I, I fucked. Damn it. Okay, well, I'll just eat that tomorrow. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, that's the first fail of the day. I was going for a perfectionist run, but I failed. Oh, I threw the other half of the shell away. That was dumb. I forgot how to crack eggs. 
I'm losing my composure. Oh, I almost forgot to... Yeah, I'm losing my grip. See, one mistake throws me off. I get in my head. I lose the rhythm. Okay, last egg. I got a shell in there. Right -row. I can fish it out though. I don't think I've ever had a good big can. They've always been super mid. Swap out my gloves. Yeah, I think my mom just usually bakes the ham as is. <laughs> that, that could be why it's not good. Fifteen out of sixteen eggs is pretty good. That's a pretty good success rate, right? It's more than a 90. Does she put cloves in it? No. We don't like cloves. I'll be here for you parasocially, of course. Thank you, I appreciate you, Mac. Not gonna lie, Mac is the best chatter. I'm still thinking about how I want to format the Naughty or Nice stream. Because it's either, like, I can decide who's been Naughty or Nice, or chat can vote. Because I could do polls, but not a lot of people vote in polls. Because the majority of viewer base is going to be lurkers, right? So I think what I want to do is instead of doing um, polls, maybe I can do... Because there's like default yay and nay emote on Twitch, I think. So maybe people can spam that during... Yeah, I think this bowl is not big enough. It's not nearly large enough. <laughs> it's gonna spill. I'm gonna move my eggs away so I don't get egg or cake in my egg. I don't think that'd be very good. Well, is she also? I always felt weird about telling people what I got for Christmas. I felt too weird. Like, I always thought it was kind of fun hearing what other kids got. Because obviously we could never get anything too expensive. Because we would be given like a budget of $100 per holiday. For presents. So, I remember. 
My sister and I would usually get like Barbies or little pet shop toys, art supplies, that type of thing. But it does seem like kind of a flex, right? You'd be like, oh, my mom got me a PS5. You know? It's like classism. I spill. I would like to preface if I was making this, I would, if I was making this off stream, I'd be so much quicker. Because when you stream, people fail to realize that you have to worry about like a million things. You have to worry about chat to make sure the stream is actually running well. You have to make sure that you're being engaging, and being funny, haha, -ha, with your commentary. Oh, dude, if somebody gets me food for Christmas, I'd love that. I love getting snacks. <laughs> no narcs, no narcs. My friend, this friend doesn't watch streams at all. I'm trying to get this one friend to, like, start watching Twitch. But they're more of a YouTube frog. Because they were telling me how they were watching um, Moist, Moist Critical. And they tried to watch one of his streams and they could not sit through it. They were like, it's so boring. I'm like, but that's what stream content is. It's not supposed to be like super punchy. Anyway, this one friend, we decided to like not do presents this year. So I, I told them, I was like, well, can I make you something? And they were like, sure. So I'm making them a painting. I'll post it on Twitter when it's done. I started it yesterday. Because I'm making paintings for that one friend, and then my sister, and then one of my roommates. And I'm making them two paintings each. They're like anime themed. They're somewhat simplistic in design, but they're gonna look cool. Because I'm gonna try and add some hollow effect to it. But I started them yesterday, and it took me all day to like get the references onto the actual canvas. Because you can't really trace onto a canvas. So what I did is I printed out the pictures of the characters and then I cut them out of paper and then of the paper cuts I traced it onto the canvases. And that took all day because I haven't done paper cutting in a while. But if you're gonna do paper cuts, I would recommend doing them on a sticky mat. Like you know the mats you have on crickets? That way your paper doesn't move as you're cutting. Because the issue I would have often with um, paper cuts is that you have to apply a lot of force and pressure whenever you're doing a paper cut. So if you're, the paper that you're cutting, like the cardstock or whatever, is adhered to the mat, then you have to apply less pressure, less strength. Okay, I hope I can get these pretty even. Yes, anyway. For that one friend, I was when I was grocery shopping, I was like, oh, they would like that snack and that snack. So <laughs> I just bought them like a good handful of snacks too. Hopefully they don't get mad at me. You gotta get every last bit out. Oh, uh, but the other day, my sister and I traded in a bunch of games at GameStop. And we have like $100 in store credit. So my sister said, if I be nice, she might. Because we were thinking about if we want to like, trade in the Switch that I have in my room, and then we could trade it in to get an OLED. So, I might get an OLED soon, maybe.
Okay, time to go in the oven. Okay, I think this time we'll put them in for 15 minutes and then rotate them. Okay, timer set for 15. Um, I gotta use the bathroom real quick. So, we're gonna go into emote only mode briefly. So, I'll be right back, okay? Um, feel free and spam as much as you want. I do have the emote thing enabled. So, wowie wow, it's on screen. I'll be right back. Yep. Okay. So now we have twelve minutes on the clock. I think what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna portion out the cake that's in the fridge, put them back in the fridge, and then start melting. Because by the time I'm done like forming the shapes, forming the um the actual cake rounds, then it'll be like it'll probably take like 30 minutes.
smell the cake. Okay, if we look at this. This is one tablespoon. If we put them together, the perfect cake pop size. So I think I'll portion them into two tablespoon portions. Um, I, I wish I had like a large Tupperware. Because every time we go to the store, I kept on forgetting to buy them. Because I, I want to have something that has a cover. I use a tray for now. Hot hands. We have eight minutes on the oven timer. Oh, it's it's just like, you know, it's like it's like Play-Doh. Oh wait, how am I gonna get it out? Yeah, I did not foresee that issue. Okay, right now I'm portioning out tablespoons and leveling it out. Yeah, this is still like really soft. Like my concern is that like if I were to lay them on the tray, they flatten out. Okay, yeah, let's see. We're at 145. Let's see how long these take. It'll make, I think it'll make like 50 per. What is nice is that it's like fully congealing together. Like you can't really see the parts where I'm not like mushing it together. Like when I'm pressing it into itself, it's like fully combining. Like I'm glad it's not like crumbling at all. I just realized I haven't tasted it yet. 
tasted it yet. <laughs> Hopefully it's good. I want to try one, but then I'd have to wash hands again. I'll try one once I'm done completely rolling them out. Because that's kind of the one bad thing I don't necessarily like about baking. Is that you don't really know if you fucked up till it's done. Because <laughs> like when you're doing stove top, you can like taste as it's on the stove. If you're doing soups, you can taste and season as you go. But with baking, if you messed up, then it's over. Can't really fix it. You can tell while it's baking? Yeah. I mean, my main concern is, like, since I put, like, the bottom part of the cake in, the kind of browner bit, I'm worried it's gonna taste, like, not burnt, but not as good as it could. So this first batch might be kind of iffy. But of course, nobody will tell them, right? Nobody's gonna snitch. I just realized cake pops are probably the most like profitable baked good because you can make so many and they're so little but you can charge like two dollars per like if you're just thinking about cost of good and how long it takes to make them 50 cake pops two bucks eat two bucks each is a hundred bucks for like four hours of work that's pretty good I have three minutes left in the oven. I don't think I have enough white chocolate. Because <laughs> just looking at... I have three 11 ounce bags. I genuinely don't think I have enough. That's kind of bad. Because for the longest time, like during pandemic, they didn't have white chocolate. Or like the wafers. Like the little discs that are specifically meant for melting. Hmm. Okay, right now I have 16. Do you use coasters? Yes. Yes. Especially on this nice table? Yes, I do. <laughs> at home? Like at my parents' house? No. Because the dinner table we've had, we've had for like literally 20 years. So it's busted, it's got grooves in it, watermarks. But on this nice table? We're using coasters. Okay, I have 40 seconds on the clock. Let's see how many I can do.
Okay, 15 seconds per cake pop. That's not bad. Could be faster. These are really oily. You can see how like shiny my gloves are. Or I can see. Okay, oven. So I got two, four, six. Twenty-three done. We'll check on them in another 15. like about washing my hands this much is that it irritates my skin like I'm starting to get a rash right here but you know it's fine it's fine Like, I have pretty good skin, like, on the rest of my body, but my hands and my face are always super sensitive. That's why, like, when I wash my hands, like, I don't use, like, a, like, a hanging towel. I always use, like, a single-use hand towel. Because sometimes it's too abrasive. Okay, these are holding their shape pretty well. They're only flattening like a little bit. So it's just when I go to dip, I'd have to re-roll them a little bit. Yeah, once I was able to, like, choose whatever, like, hair product or skin product I could use, then I noticed my skin got better. My hair got better. Because my mom would always just get, like, the cheapy stuff. I'm gonna put these closer together. How to make mochi ice cream like the mochi balls that have ice cream in the center my sister loves them but they're so expensive like a six pack was almost eight dollars the last time we went to the store
I want to figure out a better setup for the kitchen. Because, like, I want to be able to look straight ahead and see the stream. Like, I could pull it up on my TV, but when you watch Twitch on your TV, it's hard to see chat. So I have to figure out a way. I could open it in browser, maybe. And zoom in. Because I hate looking to the side. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I could mirror my phone. Because, like, we have a Samsung TV. So it can easily connect to my phone. I might try that for tomorrow. Because, like, I know when you're watching Twitch on mobile, like, on your phone or your iPad, you can enable chat-only mode so where you don't see the what's on stream. You just see chat. So I could do that. Okay, we are about like two thirds done. We have two, four, six, about 35 cake pops, so it's probably gonna be like 50. Which is less than I anticipated. I mean, granted, these are bigger cake pops. There are two tablespoons instead of one. I feel like one tablespoon is not big enough. Because this is like exactly the size of the Starbucks ones. That's huge. It's the size of the Starbucks ones. It's not that big. I mean, I don't want no tiny ass cake pop. Oh, I should have not eaten my cake pop, so I could have used it for a comparison. Damn. <laughs> Oopsie. We have seven minutes left on the clock. to work tomorrow. Damn. You know what's funny? Because, like, I got denied my disability, right? And I called over the phone and had a confirmation, and then I got a letter in the mail a few days later. And they're like, oh! You can do these jobs. You can be a, uh, the person who mans the printer. Or, you can be a teller operator. It's like, okay. It's like, cool. But the reason why I couldn't work for the past few months is because I had to prove that I couldn't work. Because even if I had a job or if Twitch um, gave me more than X amount of money every month, then I would be ineligible. So it's like, okay. Either way, I'm still not going to work until I figure out what's wrong. So they I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Cause like, just for my expenses, I need to make at least seven hundred a month. Cause my share of rent is five hundred, and then my expenses is one to two hundred, depending on if I buy extra stuff or not. So it's like, 
I think the direction I want to do for the art channel is I kind of want to put streams on a pause and focus on making TikTok content. Because I think it, a good concept would be I write a minute long monologue. That way it's kind of similar to my clips content where it's just me talking about shit. But then it's me dubbing over, um, or just monologuing over me painting. Because I personally like that type of content. Like, because since I do art myself, I'm not, ooh, what's a good way of saying it? I'm not too attracted to art content because I'm kind of like, oh, well, I can do that too. But I kind of like when they're telling a story or like a funny, goofy story time. So I think I kind of want to invest time into that. So I would just film offline, like different shots, like B-rolls of me painting. And then I write a monologue. Hi, Lemon. Welcome back. Yeah, so I think that'll, that's what I'll do for January, February, maybe. And I'll still be working on a website to like start selling by hopefully February and March. Okay, we have four minutes left in the clock. And I have to run an ad soon, so... When I check the oven, I'll run an ad. Because I know I'm late. Twitch is going to get really mad at me. Yeah, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I have almost 50. Damn. It's a good thing I started another batch of cake batter then. Because it looks like four boxes of cake mix is going to make a hundred. That's kind of bad. Damn! Oh, fuck! Because I was talking to my sister, any... Like, any extra we're just going to hand out to neighbors? Because I, I was hoping this would make more. Because the recipe I was reading, it was saying one box could make, like, 70. But granted, they were, like, half the size, so it makes sense. Jesus Christ. Okay, three minutes left on the clock. Where are the cake pops going? They're going to my sister's workplace. She works at a factory where there's literally hundreds of employees. So, I'm doing this so she can make some friends. <laughs> Nah, I'm kidding. What's nice about, like, manufacturing places or factories is that most of the people there are, like, introverted, so they keep to themselves. So you don't need to, like, necessarily worry about making friends. Because the work style is designed to where you're supposed to be able to work on your own. <laughs> yeah, I changed the secret command earlier. Okay, I only have enough more for a half a cake pot, so I think I can try it now. Okay, I'm gonna cover this and put it in the fridge. So it made two, four, six, eight, ten. It made fifty-two. That's pretty good. Fifty-two. Not bad. Okay, I don't have a box of clear wrap, but I have, like, a roll. I have one minute left on the timer. We're gonna need a bit more time. Let's get these in the fridge.
have to rearrange the fridge to make it fit. You have to run it out after the oven. After the oven. Okay, this one's perfect. This one's done. Probably like three more minutes. And you know what else is three minutes? The motherfucking ads. <laughs> because we're late, we're late. We have to run some ads. If you want to avoid the ad, all you gotta do is subscribe for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Skip your coffee and get ad for viewing all along. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to Twitch and hashtag sub for with Prime. Cause you're out of ten. Fuck you. You don't even have to see ads anymore, so don't complain, bitch. Anyway, thank you, Lemon. <laughs> Six out of ten, thank you. Thank you. Get boom to non subs. Six out of nine, good one. Good one. Okay. Cakes in the oven. Okay, while those are cooling, then we can start melting chocolate. I'm just checking my TikTok. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, the comments on my most recent TikTok, the Animal Crossing one, are funny. I hope people know I'm joking, because the joke is saying, Oh, I don't like this type of villager, we must deport them all, or I hate immigration. And it's titled, No Jokes Allowed. Hopefully people know I'm joking. Sorry, I'm checking Twitter. I, I have 10 seconds before the oven. try this bit of cake pop. Let's see if it's good. It's really wet. Like, I think once it's fridged, it'll have a bit more, like, bite to it. It's good though, it tastes like a cake pop. Yeah, I think definitely once it's bridged, it'll be better. Because this has been sitting out for a few minutes. Yeah, I think in the next batch, I'll put less frosting. The texture is like almost there, it's like a bit too soft. Dad. Let's work on these. I'm hungry. The bird bits. Oh my god. It's really dry.
The round two cakes are done. What can we do now? Hmm. Okay, let's start melting the chocolate. Okay, so since we are melting white chocolate, it is slightly more difficult to work with than regular chocolate. Okay, I'm, I'm rereading the instructions on how to melt white chocolate. Okay, so white chocolate burns easily. And you're only supposed to use metal utensils because wooden utensils can hold moisture, so like chopsticks or turners. And since some food colorings are liquid or oil, It'll cause your chocolate to seize if not put in properly. Seizing means it it stops it from melting. So I'm going to do it in the microwave. I'm not going to do a double boiler because it scares me. So... Um... <laughs> can you put sunscreen on it? No, I don't think that's edible. Okay. So the timing on which you add the food coloring depends on the type you are using. If you are using powdered dough, add it as soon as the chocolate starts to melt. If you have oil-based dye, you have to warm up the dye so it's the same temperature as the chocolate before you add it. Because if it's different temperatures, then it'll cause it to, to break, basically. <laughs> um, liquid dye is less likely to cause seizing if added right away before the chocolate melts. That is why there's no need to warm the dye in advance. Uh... Or... It says, since it's also liquid, you can put it in once it's melted. I'm not going to temper the chocolate. That's crazy. Okay. So. Let's get to melting. I think I know what to do. Seems pretty easy. It says to melt it in 15 to 30 second increments. And I have the cheapest food coloring I can find off of Amazon. They're all funny time names too, because I think... I don't think I want to do sprinkles, because I feel like that's too messy. So I think I'm going to do some with peppermint on top, so we'll just do regular white or red with crushed peppermints on top. And then we'll do white with a red drizzle, and then red with a white drizzle. Okay, so which one's red? We have green. Oh, we could do green too. Sunset red sounds right. Super red? What? What? What's the difference? There's no like color chart.
Okay, so let's do red and green. You know, Christmas. Christmas. I like white chocolate better. I know white chocolate technically ain't real chocolate, but it tastes good. Okay, let's get started. Use these shallow bowls. I got these from the Daiso store. They're like saucers, but they're deeper like a bowl. They're really nice because they're smaller. So I, like, you know when you get a big plate and you feel your plate too high? So basically, well, I don't think I'm going to have enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to fill the bowls too much, just enough to cover the bottom. That way it melts a little bit quicker. So the way you melt chocolate in the microwave is you do 15 to 30 second in intervals and then you stir. And you want to stop heating it up when it's just almost fully melted. Like if there's some, if there's still some morsels that are like whole, it'll get melted by the other already melted chocolate that's in the bowl. So. Let's go. I don't need gloves for this part because I'm not touching the food directly. But I will get gloves later on, if I start dipping. Okay. There is a very small window in which chocolate will stay melted for. So I'm gonna get everything ready. Spoons by my, you can't see the microwave. Scared to move the tree. I'm scared. I'm gonna turn the camera off real quick because I don't want to show. Okay, I'll be right back. I just want to make sure I don't knock my camera over. In the void, Lamo. Okay. There we go. Wow. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Is white chocolate like the sherbet in an ice cream sandwich? What? What? No. Huh? Okay, let's start melting. I'm scared. Read that again slowly. Is white chocolate like sherbet is ice cream? Oh. I guess. Okay, I need to move. Okay, we're gonna work quickly. Ready, PP melt on. We're working quickly. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, I don't think I have enough chocolate. I don't have nearly enough. 
<laughs> I don't have enough. seconds. I don't have- I have far from enough. <laughs> oh no. Oh shit, stop! Okay. So this right here is perfect. You can just drizzle it, but it smells like- Okay. I think we'll just do white for now. Stop saying ill. Stop saying ill. Stop saying ill. From what I read, you can, from what I read, you can also add oil to thin it out a little bit. We're not gonna dye it. chocolate because it's not it's not enough <laughs> and when I say not enough I mean like the three bags I bought is far from what I need Pop the mayo to have one. Okay, first you dip the stick in the chocolate. And then you put the stick in the cake pop. Only about halfway. And then you dip. Oh no. It these Oh no, the the actual cake pop is too soft. I think I might have to freeze them. Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to freeze them. Cause look. Freezer here and then a freezer in the garage. Okay, it's a good thing I didn't melt more chocolate. We're testing. Have you ever had a meal popsicle? No. I'm thinking, because if I freeze them, then I can't put the sticks in. I need to hold. I need to think. <laughs> I 
need to see if the fr so freezer is big enough to hold the tray. Because I can put the sticks in and freeze them like that. That way tomorrow we can just dip and decorate. Let's see if it'll fit in the freezer. Okay, the tray fits in the freezer. New plan. We're going to put all the sticks in the cake pops, freeze them overnight tomorrow, dip them in chocolate. Okay, good. We're good. Because the this batch of cake pops is way too soft. more pizza rolls <laughs> I'm sad I'm sad dude look at that shit Ugh. I'm bummed I'm bummed hey but if we're just decorating tomorrow then we'll be fine okay if Two she cakes made 52, right? So we'll have a total of a little over 100. So I'm not click bidding, I'm still technically making more than 100. When do you need this by Friday? Because they can be in the fridge for up to three days and then in the freezer forever. Um. Because my only concern is like, I don't think I'll have enough chocolate. Like, obviously, I'm gonna buy more tomorrow. Or tonight. Fuck, I have to buy them tonight. I'm gonna keep my fucking pizza rolls. <laughs> I mean, keep in mind, we're gonna be decorating cookies on Thursday. So, they can choose either cookies or cake box. Dude, sad day, sad day. I mean, today all we need to do is prep those two cheat cake and then put the sticks in all the cake pots. So, not too bad. Not too bad. You know, pizza rolls are one of the few foods that I could just eat all day. I'd be totally fine with. Like, if I, re if I could, I could eat this whole bag in a day if I really tried. But we're not doing that. Pizza roll mukbang stream. That would go crazy. That would be a, a stream I'd be down for. <laughs> I left for three hours and you're still alive? Yeah, we're still alive. Because <laughs> I fucked up. I fucked up. Okay. I'm going to eat. No, actually, I have to prep these sticks. So much to do. Guys, I'm a pro.
Can you move the tree yet so we can see the microwave? But we're not microwaving today, so I'll keep it there for now. It don't matter. Okay. Pizza rolls are done. I put the sticks in, then I'll like it. Did. Imagine it doesn't work tomorrow. I'll lose my fucking mind. But it will work. It's fine. What is this song? I can't check. I know it's Kirby. I like them with ranch, yeah. I think the ranch is a nice cream taste added. Okay, let's get these sticks in here. Okay, we aren't gonna do this foam because we're not dipping today. Stupid cake pops. Okay. I am now going to re-attempt dipping. I don't know how I'm gonna get, or like how I can put these on the tray in the most efficient way. Definitely in the next batch, I'll have to use a lot less frosting. Cause these sticks are super long. They're like six inches. You can make like a kebab. Cake pop kebabs. Oh, but then I, I don't have the right packaging. You can have like two or three on a stick. That'd go crazy. But I think that'd be too much. Like, that'd be too, like... Too much to eat, almost.
A big fear that I have is that my sister takes it to work, right? And then she drops it. I mean, granted, everything's gonna be packaged, so it'd be fine, but I'm still, like, so scared thinking about it. Or, like, if I drop it when I'm prepping... Oh, my God. I probably just end stream and then never go live again. <laughs> But that would make a good clip, right? <laughs> it would make a great clip? That's what I'm saying! saying that I lose games on purpose, but it is funny sometimes, right? Dude, what is this sound? Okay, I'm putting them on the tray like this. That way I can kind of maximize how many I have on the tray. Oh shit, they're rolling. <laughs> I was foreshadowing. Dude, I never would have been able to do this at home. Like at my parents' house, we would not have the space. And I would not have the sanity to work in that kitchen. I'm really glad we were able to move out in November. Like, I feel just about fully settled in. Like, we're still learning where everything is in town, but... Yeah, I think if I would have had... If I hadn't moved out by December, I don't think we would have done holiday streams. Because, like, with winter break, everybody's home. Because my mom, she works for the school district. So she would be home. Um, talking about Naughty or Nice, if you haven't filled out the Naughty or Nice quiz, fill it out. We're going to use it on stream on Friday. Take less than five minutes. If you don't fill it out, you're automatically a naughty chatter. So if you don't fill it out, then you're cringe. Not saying if you do fill it out, you are a good chatter. But if you don't, then you're automatically a bad chatter. Peace, I too gasp. Yeah, the chocolate's already hardening. I think for tomorrow, or tonight, I'm gonna need to buy more chocolate. Like, a lot more. And then... I need to figure out how to thin it out.
Okay, final ten. Okay, two more. One cake pop's done because I botched one of them. <laughs> okay, gotta look. Do this tray's heavy. These wrapped, I must touch it and put it in the freezer. That would have been very bad. Yeah, so that took about five minutes for the white chocolate to completely be set again. So it's a very small window in which you can have your chocolate melted. In the freezer. I'm gonna have to see if the other tray will fit in the other freezer. So give me a second.
It'll fit in the other piece, so I just had to rearrange it a little bit. Okay. Now what needs to be done is we need to prep the other two batches of cake batter, or cake, with icing, put them in balls, and then freeze. I want to try the cake pop that I failed. This one. See if it's any good. <laughs> I tried because look, it, it's fully congealed again. That was a good party trick. The chocolate tastes good. Yeah, it's pretty solid. It's pretty good. I think I definitely need to add less icing to the next batch. I gotta wash dishes first, so while I wash the dishes, I have to run another ad because we are four hours into stream. So if you want to avoid the ad, all you gotta do is subscribe, easy clap, and I'll put on a video for you guys, okay? And I have to move the tree again. No, the tree can stay there. No, I kind of like it when it's covering the light. Here, turning cam off too, real quick. That way I don't leak. No leaks. No burrs, no leaks. Void. <laughs> okay, my shoes are like running up against my ankle and I hate it. Okay, it's good video on. So I gotta wash dishes real quick. Because I need the pot. Before we cooked them. Has a light, cakey, fluffy sort of texture. Definitely not something I'd want to eat every day, but definitely interesting. I'm also gonna eat cloud my pizza egg. rolls. The cloud egg was kind of a novelty that was popular on Instagram for a little while. We're gonna separate the yolk from the white like we did for the souffle omelet. We're gonna dollop that on this baking sheet, and this is gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. Now we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna drop our yolk back into that little pocket that we made and bake it until we have the consistency of a sunny side up egg. And that folks is a cloud egg this is Whoa. kind of a deconstructed egg it's a little bit high concept this one is interesting tasting it's really more for the gram than it is for the mouth 
Chinese style steamed egg. It looks custard. so good though. So here we have a couple of eggs. We're gonna mix those with some soy sauce to season it, some chicken stock. We're gonna transfer the eggs to a bowl. We're gonna put the whole bowl into the steamer basket, cover it with a plate, and then put the lid on the pot. And we're gonna let the steam kind of gently cook the entire thing until it's wobbly and custardy. Okay, so this is really cool. As you can see, it's pretty firm. It almost has the texture of a pie filling. Very silky. This is a win. This would be awesome if you drizzle a little like bit of sesame oil on top, maybe some scallions. Absolutely delicious. Coddled egg. So what we have here is an egg coddler. It's kind of a mini pot that we're gonna put the egg in along with a little bit of cream, and then we're gonna close it up and then submerge that in barely simmering water. And there we have our flying saucer touchdown. That is a coddled egg. All right, so we're gonna take the lid off. Ooh, that smells really good. Basically, the cream helped to create a gentle cooking medium for the egg. The lid helped to trap some steam, so it cooked all the way around. What I really want is a couple of toast soldiers to dunk in there. It's very tasty. Shirred egg. So now we're gonna make a shirred egg, which is similar to a coddled egg, but this time it's gonna be How open many in a ramen for eggs? And in the oven. We're gonna pop that in a 375 degree oven for between 12 and 15 minutes. I can tell that we overcooked this one a little bit, but you still have a little bit of that oozing egg yolk. It's kind of cute. It might be more delicious if you added a little bit of cheese, made it like a little egg pot for brunch. Still has good flavor. This is a nice little self-contained dish. Air fried egg. All right, we couldn't not use an air fryer. An air fryer is basically a tiny convection oven. So we've got a ramekin all buttered up. We're gonna crack our egg into it, a little bit of salt, a little bit of cream. He sounds Open so our air fryer and put this guy <laughs> right in there and close it. We're gonna set it to 300 degrees for like 12 minutes and uh, see what comes out on the other side. So this actually has a similar-ish texture to the shirred egg, except it's definitely a lot more rubbery. It's actually fairly tasty. It took 12 minutes. You could easily rubbery fry an egg in that amount of time on the stovetop and not have to deal with this ridiculous contraption. Deep fried egg. I'm gonna crack an egg into this ladle and then try to get it in there from as far away as I can possibly get, because I'm worried this is gonna just Dude, explode that's gonna pop all so much. Me. Wow, it looks like a weird jellyfish. That, my friends, is a deep fried egg. This is definitely a dangerous way to make eggs, but honestly, that's surprisingly good. This might be America's best new egg. Dehydrated egg. First things first, we're gonna blend these eggs up really well. Then we're gonna pour them into this nice little rack with a lip, close the door, and turn the dehydrator on for about six hours. Oh God, it looks like <laughs> fried cheese. I've heard that some people will dehydrate eggs and then take them camping, but unless you're like hiking the Appalachian Trail, I don't think this is a very good way to cook eggs. Frittata. So now we're gonna make a frittata, which is basically just a quiche without a crust. We're gonna crack some eggs, beat them together, add salt, two ounces of milk, just I feel to lighten like it up. So the dehydrated one could be good as like an egg flavored like rice topping, like furikake. I feel like it might be kind of good then. But otherwise, no. We're gonna start on the stovetop, medium high heat, just until the edges start to set, and then finish in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes until it's golden brown and the center is set. This is basically just baked egg. The egg is fairly tender. It really wants some cheese and other things in here. Otherwise, it's really not that much to write home about. Frozen egg? We've got an egg. We've got a skewer. We're gonna put this skewer into the egg and then freeze it to make like an egg popsicle, I guess? Okay, yeah, that is a frozen egg. I think we're gonna have to dunk it in some hot water to peel it. Oh, oh no. It is an egg lollipop and it is starting to thaw a little bit, which is very, very gross. Oh, do I really have That's to? delicious. Oh no, that is so unpleasant. Just don't. Dishwasher cooked egg. Dishwashers get hot, they fill up with steam, so maybe that's a way to cook eggs. We're gonna close it, set this dishwasher for the tough setting, and three hours later, sure the it'll work. Okay, this is very, very strange. It looks kind of like the six and a half minute egg that we did earlier, but the yolk cooked more than the white did. I, I don't understand the science behind that, but something weird happened in that dishwasher. But it definitely works and is kind of weirdly good. Maybe the next time you're gonna run your dishwasher, throw a couple of eggs in there and you've got lunch. Rice cooker egg. All right, let's say you made some rice in the rice cooker, but you wanna turn that into something that's a little bit more like a complete meal. Maybe you just wanna open it up and crack an egg right on top of that rice. Cook it right there. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. We're gonna check this after five minutes. 
All right, so this looks like a pretty perfectly cooked egg. The white is just barely set. The yolk just oozes out. Oh, that's so delicious. It's actually kind of been perfumed by the Thank rice. Thank you for the and hunger like inducing beautiful, state. almost oh, nutty oh, quality to it. This is a Thank really cool and really delicious nutty. way to cook you, man. egg. See you got a rice cooker? Better. You've got so. everything you need to make it happen. Egg cooker man. cooked egg. This is an egg cooker. You load it up with eggs, you close the lid, you turn it on, and it steams some eggs for you, I guess. Okay, those egg cooker Here we have an egg that we are actual the egg cooker. This looks pretty much exactly like any of our other cooked in shell eggs we made. The question is do you really want a ufo hanging out on your counter that only has one <laughs> purpose it's not a bad way to cook an yeah, egg all the gadgets there's are just no skin. reason to cook an egg this way it's just Slowly novelty cooked egg more things you can buy on amazon i don't know apparently you put the eggs in here and they just come out when it's done did you hear that it just made the weirdest noise oh no oh no 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 oh my god it looks like it's in a condom. This is the most disgusting egg thing we have made all day. I am Ew. sure of it. Oh, God. It has a horrible <laughs> flavor. It looks like it a sausage. Like bad seafood. I don't know why. It tastes plasticky. This is a horrible oven cooked eggs. Oven cooked right, eggs so are we... ite. They're ite. Okay, back to work. No more YouTube done. Egg hot dog. <laughs> Why are you saying no? We're, we gotta go back to work. No more dilly dallying. Take a break. Okay. So now we're gonna put the cake, mix it with icing, and then form into balls. Insert joke. Yeah, I'm getting tired. How do people work for more than eight hours a day? How, how did I used to do that? I'm crazy. That's the thing I liked about the service job, is that interacting with the people kind of grounded me a little bit. Like, if I worked in a factory, I don't think I could do it. Like, doing the same thing every day, all day. I don't think I could do it. <sighs> Dude, look, that comes out so clean. Okay, we're not putting the bottoms in. They're burnt. Packing gets boring, I I imagine so. No brown bits.
This color looks so much better without the bottom in it. This batch is definitely going to be better than the first one. I promise you that. We learn, we improve. You know what? Next year's cake pops are going to be even better. This batch smells nicer too. Making BLTs tonight? That sounds nice. I made pork last night. Because I made chicken and it was baked in milk. It was baked in this cream lemon sauce. I liked it. I personally loved it. My sister hated it. And I made enough chicken for us to have like lunch and dinner for two days. So I have to eat all the fucking chicken. So I've been eating chicken since Saturday. For like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Just to make sure I eat it before it goes bad. So annoyed at her. Because I was reading her the recipe. She's like, oh yeah, that sounds good. And I'm like, great. And she tries it. She's like, actually, I don't like it. It's because the recipe, like, it was very under-seasoned. So if I make it, I just have to season it more. Bacon time? Yeah. Hi, Flash. Welcome in, hon. Happening well today. Can we get some pizza to yours for Flash? Rare chatter. Yeah, so I'm fucking annoyed at her. <laughs> Cause she's a big little bitch. And it's hard to find stuff that she'll eat. Cause like if the texture ain't right or the seasoning ain't right, she won't eat it. Makes me lose my mind sometimes. Okay, this cake is sticking to the pan a little bit. I think I got scammed. Oh, it actually came off easy. It's just that one part got sticky. Either way, I got scammed. Never stick? More like... Doesn't stick, but sometimes it does stick. <laughs> How's the baking going? Ah, uh, The baking went well. But the actual cake pop? Uh, I had to figure out a workaround, so we're going to be doing day one, day two. This is day one. I mean, cake mix is easy. Like, if I were to make it from scratch, then I think it would have been a whole different story. Maybe next year I'll try from scratch, but it's like... With cake pops? The actual flavor of the cake to me isn't... The biggest factor. I hope I get out of works early enough. I mean, bars will always be posted. <laughs> never mind, I was gonna make a joke, but never mind. Never mind.
But it's not the same, I know. I think I can watch VODs if it's a stream that I don't usually chat in. But if it's a streamer that I usually chat with, like in the chat room, then I don't watch the VODs. Okay, round two of cakes. Much better. Okay, I'm gonna swap both real quick. Now we get to add the frosting. So I think I'm going to start off with half a container and go from there. Because I kind of want this batch to be firmer. Because it usually says one box of cake mix is equal to half a container of this. I just want to go in with my hands. It looks like so much fun. Also, this batch is probably going to need less frosting anyway. Because I didn't put the bottoms of the cake in. I need to swap gloves because I, I used the wrong hand. They usually mix with them, I'm right. Oh my god, we play on Steve. Yeah, I think this is a better texture. It's a lot firmer. And like it's holding its shape a little bit better. So it'll be half a container. Oh, I think it's because I also didn't fridge this. Because remember I fridged it last time? World's largest cake pop? And we might have breakfast together because some roommates are going to go out for holiday. But probably. Yeah, that was fun. I should not play with it like that. I'm gonna drop it. Yeah, I don't think I need to fridge it in between. I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, 
Okay, we're gonna start shaping and forming. Yeah, this is still super soft, but it's because it wasn't fridged. Should I fridge it? No, it should be fine. It's just gonna go straight into the freezer. I'll just have to work quickly. How many do you think this is gonna make? I think this will make 48. Because we took out the bottom of the cake. Two. <laughs> Well, one, two, you're wrong. Five. No, oh, the other batch made 52. And welcome in, Peason's biggest fan. Hope you're doing well today, man. Can we get some Peason two yos for rare chatter? Peason, uh, Peason's biggest fan? Okay, you know, I was gonna try and make like 200 but i think it's looking close to 100 is going to be our final count You know when you're rolling? For me, it's making more of like a diamond shape. It's so hard for me to get a sphere. Should I make these K-pop smaller and scam everybody? <laughs> it, it, it is harder to work with since it's a bit warmer. But we're speed running, so it's fine. get carpal tunnel tonight. Us baking. Yeah, tomorrow's title will be decorating 100 plus cake plus. Oh my god, that's crazy. My goal was to do like one full batch today and one full batch tomorrow, but I don't think that's gonna happen because these aren't like as firm as I want them to be. I think the strat of freezing them is gonna work to my advantage. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking because. If you freeze them to serve, you have to let them thaw for at least a day. So if you get them done tomorrow, I can freeze them and then take them out of the freezer Thursday morning. Yeah, I'll do that. That way they'll be in the freezer. Okay. What if this doesn't make 50? Uh oh. Then I'd be a liar.
if there's a potluck at your work or school, do you eat the food that people make themselves? Because, like, I know during pandemic, I was kind of hesitant to. But germs only really may remain on surfaces for so long. And as long as things are stored properly, then germs won't fester. Like if it's fridged or frozen. The only time when things can... Or the danger zone... Is when things are kept at room temp. Depending on what the item is. And if it's not like fully sealed. So like depending on what food they brought. Then I would eat it. Like, I think people would feel comfortable since I'm gonna, like, individually package the cookies and the cake pops. I think that should be fine. Because, like, my biggest concern or fear is that nobody takes any of them. Or, like, only ten of them are gone. Like, that would make me very sad. Because usually for, like, the work potlucks, people would just bring in, like, a catering order. So, like, cookies or sandwiches. Like, not many people bring homemade goods. Okay, right now I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20. I have 22 rolled out. I don't- Uh-oh, uh I don't know if I'm gonna make 100, fuck. We'll just say that I was exaggerating. another batch but I feel like that'd be a lot of time not that I don't have time but I'd have to buy like a lot of white chocolates I mean, 75 K-Pops is still a substantial amount. Did you meal prep already? Yeah. Because I made enough food for dinner last night for today and tomorrow. So she has enough meal prep. Don't worry about it. Always picking a fight. <laughs> you know, Peason's biggest fan is super passive IRL, but all they want to do is fight in my chat room. I think they're being super fake.
<laughs> Greed, I'm super passive. <laughs> hey, Bay Brown. Welcome in. I think you got gifted earlier, so enjoy the emotes, man. Welcome in. I have enough for a baby cake pop. Okay. So now. I'm tired. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Oh, 36! Um, no, 36 plus 51? Fuck, 87. Well, what am I gonna do? <laughs> uh, that's because we didn't use the bottom bits for the second batch. I mean... You know what I could do? You know what I could do? I can make this batch the smaller ones. That way they get 50 big ones, 60 small ones, and then two dozen decorated cookies. I could do that. That way they get variety. Like, if somebody's dieting, they can get a baby cake pop. And if somebody's dieting, or not dieting, like me, then they can get a big one. <laughs> Everybody who comes in late gets little ones? Damn, you're brutal. Yeah, I think we'll divide these in two. We'll do that. <laughs> no, we're not clickbaiting. We're not clickbaiting. I would never lie. Hope there's no liars. Oh, but then I can use that baby piece. Fuck. I mean, frick. Okay, I'm gonna divide these into two. For being a little bit sneaky. Dude, there's crumbs all over the floor. <sighs> I just cleaned and mopped the other day. Okay, let's divide these in two. These ones are going to be so cute. Okay, so this is how big they're supposed to be. Fucking tiny. If you get a baby cake pop, you're getting scammed. It's not even a bite. <laughs> or maybe you give this 
size to like your little toddler, that way they don't they're not like bouncing off the walls. These ones do look better than batch one. They're a lot lighter. PRB, okay. Mac is leaving me again. I think the idea of putting multiple cake pops on a stick is super cute. Like two of these mini ones. I think it'd be adorable. Maybe for Valentine's Day, I could make heart-shaped ones. How cute would that be? We could make like bear-shaped ones. What flavor of the cake pops? I used a confetti cake mix and then vanilla frosting. And then they're gonna have white chocolate topping. Some will have peppermint, some will have just more white chocolate topping, which we'll do tomorrow. I could have done chocolate, like chocolate flavored cake, but I feel like chocolate cake pops aren't good. Like, they're a bit too chocolatey. You know how we had 36 cake pops? Now we're at 40. No longer clickbaiting, baby. Nobody can say I have lied. <laughs> Wait, do the math. I now have 60 mini cake pops. I can charge $2 per. I've doubled my profit. We charge $2 for the mini and then $4 for the big ones. Easy. Stonks are going crazy.
Also, these smaller ones are so much easier to roll. In the future, I'm just gonna do baby ones. Okay, I'm getting to like a crashing point. We're at five hours of time. Yeah, so if I were if I had a real job, I'd have a 30 minute break. Cause my what you call it? My hips hurt for some reason. I've been bending properly, because you're supposed to like squat, not bend. Okay, we have two, four, six. We have 68 minis! Easy! <laughs> 68 plus 51, 111. Wait, is that right now? Wait! 60. Oh, I. Uh... I was gonna say 68 plus 51 equals 69, but no, it's 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 109. Easy. Okay, now we're gonna melt the chocolate. PSA 2 not a scammer. Exactly, exactly. <gasps> okay, now I will melt the red chocolate. Every 15 seconds, we, we mix. Oh, I just realized I don't have to melt this much. Fuck. Damn it, I'm wasting chocolate. Too late. Sad day. SMH, I'm wasting food. Cancel me. I realized I didn't check it halfway through the oopsie. Okay, it's mostly perfect. Saved. Okay, now we're getting into stick round number two.
It's so tiny. Whoever gets the baby cake pops actually getting scammed. Get ready to spam. I was here because we're almost done for the day. about is that I wonder if these will stick together in the freezer. Hopefully not. You know, I'll just peace I to pray that everything works out. Because like some recipes I saw said you can dip them right away. Some said you have to like wait a few hours and fridge it. So I, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see.
My goal is to be done by 4 hours 55 minutes up done. I'm on track. I have about 20 left. I have 45 seconds! Oh no! Oh no! Fifteen seconds. <laughs> Damn, I failed. You know, sometimes you don't always achieve your goals, and that's okay. You just gotta find like attainable goals next time. That's 10 away. Okay, new goal by 47 or 57. Minute 30. It's like we're playing minute to win it. Six more. Get ready to spam. I was here. Get ready. Get ready. I have 30 seconds to do three more. Fuck. Done. Easy. Okay, K pop day one. Complete. Holy fuck. Okay, I think I'm going to keep this chocolate in the bowl and just mic it like this tomorrow.
Okay, now we can wrap this and put it in the freezer and call it a day. Whew. I am tired. Was anybody here the whole time? I think Popopo and Mac were here the whole stream. You guys are crazy. You guys think I could work in a bakery? Type one. I'd probably lose my mind, but it's are way too hot. I think it'd be fun, but also stressful. Okay. I'm back. You missed it. We're done. <laughs> but you know what else? It's time for it. And say welcome back to the motherfucking ads. Because chatters, we are five hours... F f we are five hours in the stream, so it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. You can avoid the ad by subscribing for $4.99. Just five dollars. Skip your copy and get ad previewing. If you're new here, follow the stream. Because if you follow, you can tap in chat and you get cool follow-only emails. After the ad, we have a little bit more to do. We gotta clean up and then thank subs. If you don't miss this, fuck, if you don't want to miss a single second, subscribe. Easy clap. Get boomed to non subs. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna put this in the freezer. That way it can set overnight. Okay. What now? I'm gonna wipe the table down, and then we'll do calligraphy. Because we had a lot of boilers today. Some of y'all went crazy with the subs today. crumbs all over my mouse. <laughs> Oopsie. Okay, go like it for time. You 
guys know the drill. If you donate or use your channel points, I'll write your name. Easy. I get icing on my finger. Oh my god. Can't be see me. Being able to sit down. Holy. <laughs> okay, let's change our title because we're farming. Um, For the paper presents under the tree, I'll make them on um, Friday or Saturday. That way you guys can see it like under the tree. So I'm just going to keep a mental note of all the presents I have to make. Which is a lot. Hey, child, exchange for farming. So if you use your channel points or donate, I'll write your name. on my phone. Also, while you guys are waiting, um, feel free and look at the pinned message in chat. It also just got linked in the chat room as well. Fill out that quick survey. Have you been naughty or nice this year? It takes less than five minutes. It's going to be used for stream on Friday. We've already had a good handful of submissions. No stream Wednesday or Thursday? Yes, we, yeah, we are streaming this week. Tomorrow, it'll be day two of Cake Pops decorating. Thursday, we're doing cookie decorating. Friday, Naughty or Nice stream. And then Saturday, Santa Watch 2022. I've been nice. Have you filled out the survey? Okay, I am crashing. I am crashing. I need water. I haven't drank water for like two hours. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I'm gonna try the second batch of cake pop mix. I have a good job. Oh yeah, that is much better. I don't taste the burnt bits. <laughs> Pen's dead. I keep forgetting. Why are all my purple pens dying? Just like my career. Bro. All like the, my bright purple pens are dead. 
Big sad. I'll show these on the DSLR when I'm done writing them. Since we don't have the second cam today. Okay, first we had Kobobo with one gifted to the chat room. I think I need to get some, like, real food in me. I don't think the pizza rolls... Or pizza pockets... Were enough. I... I mean, it's almost my dinner time. Because I usually will have, like... Breakfast between 8 and 9. Lunch between 12 and 1. And dinner 5 and 6. But on days where I stream, I usually have, like, a larger breakfast and then a larger dinner. So um, I still eat breakfast at like 8 or 9, and then I'll have my lunch dinner, like right after stream, because I usually end at 3 or 4. Yeah, pizza rolls aren't filling at all, but it's like, I feel like they're designed to where you just want to keep eating them, and it's not good. Okay, let's get a close-up on this page. This will all be up on Twitter if I remember. Oh, let me turn on this other way. Oh, I should have had the blood on the whole top. Oh, that was so good. We have Kobobo with one gifted and Mac with two gifted today. Damn, I should have had this fucking light on the. What, what's nice about this unit is that it does have like a lot of lighting. So I didn't need to bring any of my ring lights downstairs. <sighs> Which is nice. It looks better. Fuck me, dude. <laughs> Oopsie. I'm a prof- Fuck. I'm a professional. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. It's whatever. Lighting will be better tomorrow. Okay, my ears really hurt. Oh, it's because the the mask too. Ooh. The handles on this mask are different. Cause like you know how it's usually like a round piece of elastic. This is like a flat piece of elastic. That's why it hurt. Damn. My ass off. Okay, we have a few, a few more names. like that well a lot of the ones that I've seen don't have like a flat piece of elastic they've all been like round I don't know it's probably just like a different because we ordered this marina I mean my sister 
the boat marina. <laughs> Rutro. Uh, my sister, she ordered like the same type as we did before, but I guess they're different. Okay. Okay, we are gonna do our last name of the day. So if we want me to write your name, all you gotta do is use your channel points or donate to the channel. It's gonna be the last call for today. Gonna straight to bed after the stream. That's only eight. It's not even that late. Come on, are you a boomer? Oh, do you guys want to finish watching the egg video? I'll put that on real quick. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, there's only six minutes left. Let's finish it. People have a whole lot of different hack techniques for making all kinds of different eggs in the oven. We're gonna try three right now. So on your right, we're just gonna try to make a hard boiled egg. These next two, we're gonna butter them. And okay, this let's finish one, them. We're gonna put a little <laughs> bit of water in, crack the egg in there, and try to make a poached egg. On the left, we're gonna crack an egg right in here. Yeah, the, the channel salt, has a, a series of... of a bunch of these with different foods, so we'll have to comb through these at some point. Cream, and then beat that up to try to make a scramble. Beat that up, what? Then we're gonna take this whole muffin tin, what? slide it into a three. 150 degree oven for about 12 minutes. After 12 minutes, this looks more like also, a Also, like I said, last call for percolography per really If you want me to write your name, all you gotta do is use and your channel points. And here we have our scrambled egg, which is really just kind of like a mini frittata sort of guy, which looks kind of gross. I mean, these oven hacked methods are not really more convenient. Yeah, I like playing delicious. the video when we were egg doing downtime broth. or dishes. We're I think it's this nice. this chicken broth that we have here, bring it up to a simmer. Now you guys don't get bored. Really well, <laughs> and then we're gonna gently just stream these into the hot broth so that it produces these kind of ribbons. And this is our egg cooked in broth. The strands are a little bit broken up, but you still have these very delicately cooked egg bits floating Thank you for in a lot of delicious broth. Fan. 
the egg adds a nice texture. Dude, that's like it miso lends soup. It a nice richness, and the egg itself Don't say is ew. really delicate and slippery. That's this rude. is really fun. Ah, the great it's outdoors. Fun. Except for the fact that it's 27 degrees, but we're not gonna let a little cold stop us. Grilled egg. All right, we're gonna grill an egg on a gas-powered grill. We're gonna turn the flames on high. We're gonna cook this for between 10 and 15 minutes. I mean, good enough for who it's for. Well, you know, it's actually not peeling as hard as I thought it was going to. That's definitely a little bit uneven. A little bit of salt. Uh, you know, it's not that bad. I feel like it explodes on the grill top. But you would probably want to rotate it just so it cooks a little bit more evenly. Smoked egg. Okay, the idea here is that instead of cooking it over direct heat, we're gonna let the smoke and the indirect heat cook the egg over a longer period of time, around an hour. The coals are all off to one side and the smoke should circulate around slowly cooking the egg. This egg after an hour is definitely a little bit overcooked. Ew. Mm, that's pretty good. You actually get a little bit of the smoked flavor. The texture is pretty bad. I would be worried that <laughs> if we backed off on the time, we wouldn't get that smoked flavor. So there's a little bit of a trade off there. All right, we got a campfire going right now. We're gonna knock that down to create a little shelf for our cast iron pan. We're gonna give it a drizzle of olive oil and crack our egg in there. I'm actually just a little bit worried that that top is never gonna cook just because of how cold the air is. So, you know, I'm just gonna call an audible and give this a flip real quick just to speed the cooking of the yolk along a little bit. Okay, you can see that that underside where it was in direct contact with the pan really took on a lot of color. Mm, but that's actually delicious. And the whole thing has a very smoky flavor and aroma. It's very appealing. If you're trying to cook an egg outside on the campfire, a cast iron is definitely a really good option. Foil pack egg. So we've got our little foil pack here. We're gonna spray it with some cooking spray. This feels very dangerous. We're gonna crack an egg right in the hey, pouch. last name, hold last it up, call, and put last call. Directly on the fire and see what happens. If you want me to write your I name, mean, I gotta use really your puffed up use your channel points. Way. Last call. Gonna, let's just call this. Okay, so here we have our foil packed egg. For whatever reason, it smells terrible. That does not I don't know look if good. The aluminum burned, or there was some kind of chemical reaction, or something like that. But this egg is evil. It is haunted. I am not eating it. Egg color. Whole cooked <laughs> egg? All right. Just out of curiosity, I want to see what happens if I bury an egg directly in the coals. And after a few minutes, we'll just check on it. Oh, God. Oh. Um. Okay. That was a disaster. Here we have an exploded egg. This was not a good idea. I did this so you didn't have to. Just don't do this. Unless it's a prank sauna cooked egg we've got an egg and we've got this portable sauna and i'm just gonna hop in here with my egg and hopefully it's just gonna cook along with me and here we have our sauna cooked egg if that was a real sauna and it was 180 degrees then we probably hey, let's go. over the let's course go. Let's of many go. many hours would have cooked an egg so let's Any see how far redeemers? we got. that's a raw egg sauna egg fail sad engine cooked egg I've been revving the engine of this for the last 30 <laughs> minutes cooked. to heat things up. We're gonna situate this foil pack next to the engine block and close the hood. All right, let's see what we've got. Okay, this feels disconcertingly not warm. Here's our car engine egg. It seems as though it was starting to cook a little bit. Any it definitely Christmas looks color? Weirder than it was. I'll do green. Uh, yeah, I can't recommend this. Solar oven egg. The whole idea behind this device is it's somehow going to conduct the heat of the sun and trap it in this environment to create a space that will cook an egg like an oven. Okay, it's been three hours. There's no more sunlight, so we're gonna see what we got. Yeah, uh, this also is not really a cooked egg. There is almost a little bit of white along the edge that started to cook. I think maybe if we left it out there for another four hours and maybe we were in Miami, then maybe something would have happened. But hey, last call. Actually, happened. last call. Solar fail. Last All right, call. a few takeaways. There are a lot of ways to cook eggs, and the smallest changes in time and temperature are gonna have a really profound effect on the texture of an egg, the way that it tastes. The other thing that we've seen is that there are a lot of classic, kind of foolproof ways for classic. making a delicious egg, and I don't know that any of the novel methods that we use for Low cooking them were really classic. any kind of an improvement. And that's it. That's almost every way to cook an egg. If you've got other ways that we didn't think Orange, of, feel free okay. to leave them in the comments. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go get my cholesterol checked. What a good egg, but yeah, I love the videos like this. They're so good. Cause look, they have cheese, potato. They have so many. Wait, what's this one? Bacon, ooh. Tomatoes, yeah, we can come through these a different day.
Okay, last name. Okay, we're done. Let's get some close looks on these names and we'll call it a day. Holy moly. Dude, I'm tired. Excellent work. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, chatters, I think we're gonna end it here. Oh my god, Hassan's live. No no raid, nobody's live. Anyway, chatters, I would like to thank everybody who hung out today. Any chatters, lurkers, I appreciate you all. Once again, thank you to everybody who donated to the channel today. I appreciate you. Um, I'll be live again tomorrow for day two of Cake Pops. Um, hopefully they turn out okay in the freezer and then we can decorate them tomorrow. So schedule for this week, we're going to be doing day two of Cake Pops tomorrow. Cookies Thursday. Um, Naughty or Nice Stream on Friday and Santa Watch on Saturday. For Naughty or Nice Stream, make sure you all, if you're watching, chatters or lurkers, fill out this survey. It takes less than five minutes. Fill it out. Easy clap. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow. Follow my Twitter. Follow my Twitter. That way you get updates about stream. Wowie wow. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> I'll try to show up for day two. I appreciate you, man. You better be here. Every stream you don't show up for, you get a negative point. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking tired. I'm so tired. Oh my god. But gee, shout out Titans for gifting 10 subs. They're crazy. Okay, bye for real now. I'll see you all tomorrow. Negative points? Yeah, I'm not lying. I never lie. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.